Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday to you. I'll give it a couple of minutes. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Awesome. Thank you. We have everyone in. We are waiting for Tom Backley. Okay. Um, and Ken. Okay. So there's Tom. I think we can go ahead and get started. Ken, um, I know Ken and our team just got out of a three hour meeting, transitioning as he is retiring. So we were workshopping with him. Okay, do you wanna go ahead? Actually, let me pull up the agenda. All right. Do you wanna go ahead and I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Do you want to do roll call, Anne? Mark Trout. Here. Russ Gilbert. Here. Nathan Tribble. Here. Heidi Swan. Here. Tammy Herbert. Here. Andrea Belcourt. Here. Jason Johnson. Here. Tom Backley. Here. And Dave Davis. Here. All present. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So I wanted to go ahead and this is our sixth meeting and welcome back, Dave. And I'm so glad everyone has joined us. I'd like to provide a quick update on the action that City Council took at its March 22nd meeting regarding the Chacker Initiative. Along with the staff report, I submitted a memo to the City Council with a summary of the group's views following the March 21st Cannabis Advisory Group meeting. The memo is attached to tonight's agenda. I hope you've had a chance to look at it. In response to a written communication that we received, I'd like to clarify that when the group was polled regarding its support for a possible competing measure, Tom, Heidi, and Jason were clear no's. However, when the same question was asked with the scenario that council determine a competing measure as the best course of action for the community, six group members supported a competing measure with significant regulations. That is what I had conveyed in the memo. So if there is something unclear about how I had conveyed that uh, in the memo, I just wanna clear that up right now uh, and be sure that uh, I accurately captured what this, this advisory group had conveyed to us last week. Mayor Pro Tem Jackson and Council Member Armado were not able to attend the last council meeting. They had an excused absence, but there was a quorum. Mayor Detoy, Council Member Campbell, and Council Member Massey voted to receive and file the certificate of sufficiency for the proposed initiative and that's the Chakra Initiative, and submit the ordinance without alteration to the voters in the November 8th municipal election. That's the only action that they took. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? I think um, 
we, we discussed what council could do and, and that's what they did at the time. Council also knew that you have one, you have a meeting today and we'll go ahead and formalize the recommendations you all make and submit it to the council at the next, um, the next council meeting. Heidi? I, I would like it adjusted in the minutes to say that um, there were three of us who definitely said no to an ordinance. And then there was a couple of people where it wasn't clear about um, their uh, particular stance on that day. And I think, I think it should be adjusted. I think we should find out what their stances are and, and have that be adjusted in the minutes and also in the, the staff report. Yeah. Yeah, I would say if you are going to adjust that, <clears throat> I would like it to reflect the vote of the of the committee. Um, I don't think that a blanket statement that says the committee supported is appropriate. Um, if you are going to go that route, I, I do think that you should, at every level, maybe just put a little earmark that says um, this many people supported, this many people uh, did not. I would agree with that. Yeah. On everything. Sure. And that is the plan for the final set of recommendations. We'll do a set of recommendations, but we'll also reflect where people were. Um, because this was a poll and the committee wasn't present in your entirety, um, I also just thought it was, since it wasn't your last meeting, you have the opportunity to have another week's worth of consideration and you may change where you are. And so that's what I felt comfortable doing at the time, but absolutely, I, I would be much more precise in the final Sounds segment. great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And let me, uh, before Anne um, has to jump in, let me uh, follow the agenda. I think we need to approve the minutes. Anne? Thank you, Susha. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes with the change that we will reflect each individual vote taken at the last meeting? So moved. Thank you, Andrea. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Nathan got that one. Um, and I'll do roll call vote. Matt Cottrell? Aye. Russ Gilbert? Aye. Nathan Tribble? Aye. Heidi Swan? Aye. Tammy Herbert? Aye. Andrea Belcourt? Sorry, aye. Jason Johnson? Aye. Tom Backley? Tom? Aye. Thank you. Dave Davis? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Under item five, to discuss and finalize recommendations to the council, wanted to go over the questions that we had pulled the group and we'll, let's go over them again and we will capture where everyone is, including Dave. Welcome back, Dave. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. And so we, Heidi, is your hand still up or was that, is that new? Okay. No, I think I'll lower it. Sorry, I have, to switch, I have to switch screens to actually read. I don't have my notebook, so I'm going to switch screens to read the questions. I left my notebook in the car. Okay, so I will go over one, two, three, four, five. There are five questions, and then there are some additional questions um, that we can do. So the quest first question is, is there a cannabis access problem? And this is um, also from the past meeting, right? So is there a cannabis access problem in Hermosa Beach? And if we can, okay, Heidi. Okay. And where's Anne? Oh, there she is. Okay, so would you like us to just go through, the participants as I see them on the screen. Do you want to call out the names and then just record it? How do you want to do it? Um, 
I think if you want to just call out. Okay. Um, the people on the As screen, I see it, I'll, okay. I'll take Perfect. notes. Perfect. Thank you. So Heidi was a no. Cami. Sorry, is this, we're giving our answers from, I am got confused. This is our final answer now, or this is what we said last week? This is our final answer now. Okay. And um, since are we Are we going to do this again afterwards? We can, if you'd like. I, I'm just curious if there's more information or discussion. Um, um, there can be more discussion, of course. Um, so. I think if. If there's more information for us to consider, we should have our final vote after that. So we don't have a presentation. We can answer outstanding questions you may have. Um, we have Lauren back with us, and then of course city staff is here. We also provided you, and provided you with an attachment. Um, Attachment three is a state tax breakdown. That's something that we had discussed last time and I had shared with you that we'd get back to you on what the actual state taxes are. So that's your attachment three. Attachment four is the example of Port Wainini's conditions. If you'll remember, Chief Salinas had mentioned that they had put 50 or so conditions on their CUP process and while our process is not taking the CUP route because we have a ballot measure that's already on the ballot. As part of your recommendations, if you wanted to look at those CUP conditions and advise the council that some, none, all uh, of those might be applicable to our city, or you may have some other conditions that you wanna throw out there so you can do that. Russ? Sure. Um so the, the question without additional context is just, it's hard to answer because my answer in a completely literal practical sense is no, there's not an a, there's not a access problem, but in a complete sense, the reason that there's not an access problem is because everybody ignores the law as it's currently written and just orders it or gets it elsewhere. Right. So the, the question is just, it, it, the way it sits on a page doesn't reflect the reality of of the, the full context there. Yeah, so we could put an asterisk to that and say the context is there is an understanding that um, there are deliveries occurring in the city and that is outside of, of what is legally permissible in the city. Right. Hard to point to exact data on that, but that's the general understanding. So we can, we can put it in parens that that's the that's the context, absolutely. And is the context that it's, ac to me, there's access, it's not necessarily in the city because you can go a mile or two away and get some, so that's still access. So are we taking that into account as well? I just see it as a general problem. If I want ca cannabis products, can I get it quickly, easily from Hermosa and the, and I, and I, based on what you and Russ have both highlighted, I think maybe the better way to ask this question is, do Hermosa Beach residents have difficulty accessing cannabis? Um, maybe that's the way to ask it. Um, we can rephrase that question um, because you're is right. It, is it in the city only or is it in general? I, I can get it. I think it's, I think, I think we intend it as an in general question, not in the city. It's a, such okay. a small city and there are a lot of things, everything that we need to put our lives together, we don't necessarily get in the city. So for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in a city like that too for a long time. So um, that's definitely understandable. So here's what we can do and I'll um, definitely get to the raised hands. Why don't we go ahead and have an open discussion of um, I'll read the question, not take a poll at this time, have an open discussion, call for public comment and do the vote at the end because through your discussions, you will inform each other, which is absolutely fair and um, a great part of the process. And, and we'll go from there. Would that be agreeable? Awesome, okay. Matt and anyone else that had their hand up? 
Mine was just, I mean, maybe the caveat to that is, but I mean, it's a catch 22 is, do Hermosa Beach residents have access to legal cannabis? And the answer is no, but, and I don't think anybody can really debate that, but is that really the question here? Because I mean, I took the question as, do they have an immediate need or a, a, a need that can't be met? And yes, neighboring communities can provide or non-legal means you, you can get it. And so, yeah, I think we probably, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to play semantics here, but I mean, those are two things to consider in this question. Is there a need that cannot be met is yeah. getting closer? Legally, I think we would say yes, but but unless you drive to Redondo or right. LAX or wherever else you want to go. Yeah, so. And Redondo. Yeah, I know we can go to that. Yeah, not just yet, absolutely. Yeah, Nathan? <clears throat> What's the intent of the question? And I, I hate, again, to, that it's now the third person following up on why do we so, have this question. But the more we dig in, yeah. I think the less pertinent it is that a group with such disparate kind of perspectives yeah. on this issue answers the question of whether or not there is a problem uh, with access. Because okay. even as we start zeroing in, part of the reason, if I'm understanding um, Matt's sort of input correctly, is that Part of the reason there's access is because people are accessing it illegally in the status quo, which means like, of course, it's not a problem to get it because as we saw from the presentation, weed maps will point to 60 locations that deliver within the city limits of Hermosa, even though that's clearly against the law. Um, and so maybe if we understood the yeah. context for why this question was pertinent, once we've already established that it was a unanimous vote, that the ordinance was a problem, Right. Why do we keep going with digging in on the rationale of why we're trying to? Like, and, and that's um, that's a fair that's a fair question. Whether it's the third time or the thirty third time, it's actually relevant to keep asking because we have um, more information every time. So I think as we crafted that question, it goes along the lines of what is the problem that needs to be solved? Is there a problem that needs to be solved? Um, more simply put, what's broken? So we have an initiative that showed up in our city. It wasn't sanctioned by our city. It wasn't sanctioned by residents or a group of residents that represent a majority of our residents. One resident signed off on it, but that just showed up. That's not the city's starting point. That's not your starting point. We don't look at that and say, oh, wow, there must be a problem. So I think what awkwardly what that question was trying to get to is do you all believe there's a problem that needs to be solved? What is the problem? That's where that comes from. And so if the answer is the problem is that ordinance, <laughs> can't, can't we just start there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can start there. We can eliminate that question. And uh, if that's the answer, we can do that too. Um, Russ? If we're eliminating the question, let's go past it. Oh, do you want to... <laughs> I was just going to say, if you wanted to split it into two questions, right. is it practically possible for anyone in Hermosa to get cannabis? The answer to that question is yes. Is it legally possible? The answer there is no. And that, that does seem like a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, Tom? Yeah, I would not be in a favor, not be in favor of eliminating the question because I think it's getting to the policy question of, of it, it, is there uh, an issue uh, with access? Uh, do, do, can people access legal marijuana? I don't, I think to split hairs between whether it's happening illegally or, or illegally is, is just kind of clouding the issue. The, but the policy question is, do the people of Hermosa need additional access to cannabis. And, and so it's a policy question. And so to say, well, do away with it because we all don't like the ordinance. Well, I think now that's getting in, or we all don't like the initiative. Is, I think that's now getting into uh, a tactical discussion. We wouldn't be having this discussion if we, we wouldn't be meeting if, if, if there hadn't been an initiative. Mm -hmm. And the city had a policy position. Um, the city had a policy position regarding uh, cannabis and it was banned and 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 so I think it is a relevant policy question as to is, is there a need for legal cannabis dispensaries in Hermosa? I think it's a valid policy question. As a business operation. Yeah. 
I think it's a policy question as opposed to a tac- as, as opposed to a tactical question of what do we do with a initiative that we all don't like. That's where we seem to be in disagreement is the tactical discussion uh, mm-hmm. as opposed to the what I think this question is getting at is a policy question. And Nathan, I think the question you asked was great. I'm sorry to, to jump in. I think the question you asked right at the end is exactly the question that should be there. Is there a need for legal cannabis purchasing in, in Hermosa Beach? That's a very different question than is there a cannabis access problem, right? And to, to conflate, it's a legal issue, but let's not care about whether or not it, it's, it's a, a legal question makes that kind of problematic. I think you're totally right. The question we need to have on there is the question about the the policy issue at hand of the retail of cannabis, not is access a problem, which is so vague that at least three or four of us don't quite understand what's being asked. I would agree with Nathan and then I also Tom, I mean, when we're talking about a policy issue, that's fine, but if there's no enforcement and the policy isn't worth the paper it's written on, then talking about here. We acknowledge that there is a ban in Hermosa Beach and the chief of police is on here acknowledging that there is zero enforcement on this level and so what good is the policy if there's no enforcement? Sorry about that. Kim, do you want to mute? I think we had some feedback. Andrea? Um, I'll go back to my statement that I made, um, I I believe it was last week, and it's kind of along the lines of what Nathan and Tom are saying is that what changed that made us meet? There wasn't a great outpouring from the community saying, what is the matter with, with city council that you won't take away this ban. We don't like that ban. Nobody came forward to say that. The only reason we're meeting is because two guys from Long Beach have decided they want to make more money and expand their cannabis dispensary business. And so they've issued uh, um, initiatives to get signed and they found people, citizens within each city to circulate that petition. And so now it's going on um, on the ballot. And that's all fine and good, and the people can vote and say yes or no. But I, I think that the policy was in place. No one was complaining about the policy of we have a ban on cannabis. And if people wanted it, they have figured a way to find it. So I, I, I really do think that that's the, the crux of it. But that's. Thank you, Andrea. Heidi? So uh, a couple things. So we're we're so small that any commute out of our city to get legal cannabis is not such an inconvenience. For instance, uh, we were members at Costco for many years, but it was such an you know. But if you want to buy things in bulk, you've got to drive all the way to the Hawthorne store. It's a hassle. So I go. You, I used to go once a month or whatever it was, so that I wasn't constantly inconvenienced. And I think that to ask our residents to be inconvenienced a little bit to protect our youth is an okay ask. That to me is is perfectly fine. Um, The problem with this ordinance is it's not just this ordinance. If we defeat this ordinance, and I think we can, more will be coming back. More pot shops, businesses, will be kicking down our door to get in. So how do we prevent more coming back? I think keeping the ban is the best approach because if we let the nose of a camel underneath the tent, then the rest is coming through. They will have reason to complain that they weren't chosen, they should be chosen or what have you. So I think to protect ourselves going forward, the best thing is say, we just don't sell it here. And by the way, most of California doesn't. So it's not like we're outliers. You know, I think a lot, most of the communities that have given into marijuana uh, legalization are poor and um, disadvantaged communities. So why would we be ones to go, oh, okay, well, we'll just go ahead and turn over for marijuana. Um, I think those are my comments. Thank you. Jason? 
Um, uh, just first, I, uh, thanks to the discussion. I, I think it's really thoughtful questions and I appreciate um, Nathan and company bringing it up. Uh, just something to, to clarify on Matt uh, about enforcement is that I, I, I don't think that enforcement is moot and I don't know if that's what you're trying to say because I think it's the type of enforcement that's being talked about. So for example, there is enforcement. I mean, like there's no brick and mortar establishments in Hermosa Beach that sell marijuana. And I do think that that's a community concern of having brick and mortar establishments in the community and what it messages, particularly for the, the conversation about it being visual for youth, uh, particularly youth that walk our streets quite a bit in a one square mile city. So I, 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 I just, I, I have to disagree with just that enforcement being moved. And that is my my one year old yelling at me. All right, thank you. Thanks, Russ. And Jason, I I, I see your um, I see your point there when it comes to retail. And yes, you're right. I guess I was addressing the fact that it is being delivered, and there's really not much we can do about it, and it is still getting into. But I do see your point. I, I thank you, Russ. You're on mute, Russ. Apologies. Um, I, I wanted to respond to what Heidi said um, about the ban and just state that as a policy in the history of America and possibly the world, prohibition has basically never worked. It, it didn't work with alcohol. Um, the entire war on drugs is um, what was a expensive, destructive failure. Um, it hasn't worked with abortion. And we started this conversation saying that our existing ban in Hermosa Beach isn't enforced and, and furthermore basically can't be enforced. And so realistically, we need to craft a policy that lets us minimize the very real issues that come with legalization. And by the way, it pa legalization passed the House of Representatives this week. Um, it's coming and 71% of Hermosa voted for Prop 64. So I don't think there's a chance in the world um, or the underworld um, that the ban would be upheld. And I just felt like that needed to be said. And the ban in our, and I know you all know this, ban in our city is for retail operations and, and delivery, of course. Heidi? I mean, issues with my computer, sorry. So it's not like we have a wholesale ban in California. And so Hermosa is not 100% banned from getting legal marijuana products. They can still get it at a slight inconvenience. But when we talk about prohibition, uh, when prohibition ended, our government was able to say, here we have alcohol for you now that you can buy legally and it is safe. We can guarantee it's safe and we can make it less expensive than the black market. And that's not happening today in California. It's not less expensive. So it, we don't have any guarantee that by having a legal shop, it's going to eliminate the illegal market. And they can't guarantee the safety either. Yes, is it safer than illicit marijuana? I'd say yes. But is it safe? No, there's too many times where uh, the products have been recalled. And um, so that's the response to prohibition. And because we can still get it. It's not like saying you can't have it, Hermosa Beach. Yes, you can, you just make a short drive. Thank you, Nathan. So, um, I'm sorry, this is not about prohibition, but um, can the question be reframed towards, um, you know, is cannabis accessible in from Hermosa Beach or to Hermosa Beach residents, right? Like, I think I'm still stuck on, on problem, right? Because different perspectives see obviously divergent problems on this, on this topic. And I'm also trying to be a little uh, more ruthlessly pragmatic since we have a couple of these questions to get to. And if we're going mm -hmm. to uh, dig into the bag of, of, uh, of prohibition on our first question, we'll, it'll be a long night. So um, potentially in, in the sake of trying to meet, meet Tom in the middle of like maybe having a question that fits with the policy perspective, but also is not as kind of ambiguous as to the intent of the question. Maybe we can figure out a new wording and take another vote. Thank you, 
can do that. So your suggestion is, is cannabis accessible to Hermosa Beach? Residents, sorry. Yeah, do Hermosa Beach, I, I'm, I'm trying to, um, to wordsmith it live, right. but do Hermosa Beach residents have access to legal marijuana or, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure how to, how to frame that, but uh, I'm proposing something that's a little more um, technical, I guess, and a little okay. less subject to the divergent opinions we clearly have on, on the question. And so the product itself is legal, as all of you um, know and have pointed out, and the method with which folks are accessing it may be outside of the city's ordinance. And, and so that, and I think what I'm hearing from some of you is the method is a choice an individual is making. You could choose to go out of the city and purchase it from a shop that's operating legally, paying taxes in the city that is operating in or not. And so, um, and that's where the question becomes complicated. So I think we're probably getting closer to where it needs to be. And uh, Andrea. Perhaps the wording could be, can Hermosa Beach residents obtain marijuana products? Can we get it? Yes, legally. we can. I think legally is a key word too. Why does it have to be legally? Because the question, the policy that the city has is we don't, we're not having any, we're not gonna sell any here. But the question is, do we have access to it? Well, we do, we have a number of ways to do it. We can go to a legal pot shop and get it. We can go to the dealer down the street. We can order it online and have it shipped in even though we're not supposed to. So the question is, can we obtain a marijuana product? Because if we cannot in any way do that, it gives more credence to the idea that we need a dispensary. But if we can get it legally or illegally, then we don't necessarily need to change the ban. Okay. And I thought that was part of the, the question was, do we need to change the policy because no one can, can buy marijuana ever anywhere? Well, that's not true. We can buy it. And how we buy it is our choice. And like you said, you know, we can go, we go to Costco, we go to Home Depot, it's not in Hermosa, but we managed to deal with driving that little bit of distance. Thank you. Matt? Does this have to be a yes or no question? Um, no, it can be textured, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm just wondering if we could all agree on just some common verbiage mm -hmm. that is, we acknowledge one point and another point, because I think we're, we're splitting yeah. hairs here. We're running in circles. We acknowledge also, that, yeah, we go ahead, sorry. No, and it also, um, someone said earlier, it's also point of view or, or perspective. If it's very important for someone to access it while standing in Hermosa Beach, whether mm. it's legal or not becomes relevant, right? But if it's not important, if just getting the product whenever someone needs it, just like whatever other products we acquire, and people figure out, I get it next door, I get it down the street, wherever it is, then, you know, um, then it's, a, yeah, it's a different context. We're, we're trying to recraft, we're trying to recraft the question here, but maybe we could just recraft the answer and just say, give it some caveats and say, we acknowledge that there literally is no legal way to access cannabis in Hermosa Beach, doesn't exist. So anybody that's accessing cannabis standing in Hermosa Beach is doing it illegally. However, we have neighboring communities and we can get it. And so maybe there's a way we could come up with a common, I don't know, some common verbiage and move past this. I don't, I don't know if that's helpful or not. It just no, seems it is helpful. That we're running in circles. What we can do is I'll read the rest of the questions. Unless for us, you want to speak to this. I can go into reading the rest of the questions. We can come back to it. Someone can wordsmith it. Um, and, and propose something toward the end, Russ? I've, I've just a quick response to Andrea, and that is if we don't, if we vote to uphold a ban, the, the people behind the initiative on the ballot are going to make this a legalization issue. And if you put a legalization issue in front of an electorate that 71% voted for Prop 64 uh, and generally doesn't want the ban, 
that initiative will pass uh, and we will not have, the you know, city council will not have the ability to manage it. Delivery from anybody outside Hermosa Beach will be illegal, um, which creates a monopoly condition basically where they can charge whatever they want. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I, I think this is just a very important issue that uh, I, again, I, I hate spending this much time on, but it seems important. Tom. Yeah, man, I'll just take, and I know this is maybe supposed to be one of the easy questions. So we, I'm, I'm, with Nathan, uh, <laughs> I'm with Nathan that we need to uh, bust a move here because uh, I'd prefer to wrap it up tonight. But for me, um, this question gets to, you know, is there is there a need for retail cannabis in Hermosa? That, that's the question. Um, is, is there a need for it? And, and I think that's what the, the question was getting at and for me that that is a a policy question where the, the council has said hey community group you know we'd like you to look at this we've got this initiative and, and so I, I think it is a relative super important first question of is there a need for it and and so when that's what I was sort of seeing when I saw it the first time which is why I answered it no because people can legally get marijuana close by or get cannabis close by and so we're we're getting kind of tangled around the whole is it is it legally happening with with right. one piece which is delivery and and all that I, I think it's just a question of do do we need this um, it, to the degree that we should be changing our ordinance and changing so our stand and taking from that because I spent three hours with our soon to retire community development director I'm going to offer up that that question really the way it's um, about retail operations, it's a land use question. So there is, it's legal, 71% if I, I'm forgetting the number exactly, but let's say it's 70-ish percent of Hermosa residents voted to support Prop 64. They didn't vote to have it in the city, of course, sold as a, as a retail establishment. But it doesn't mean that they don't, they wouldn't support that. There's just two different questions. But it's a land use question. So it, if it can be accessed, does Hermosa need to change its land use to allow retail sales in the city in order for Hermosans to access it? So, um, and spoken like a true city manager, Tom, I think you at least helped me try to articulate the question I was trying to ask before awkwardly, but it's a land use question separate from should it be accessed and all of that? Because those questions may have already been answered. Prop 64 was, was answered. And in a map that we saw earlier, I think it was um, in one of the presentations of California, post Prop 64, if you look at the cities that have authorized, whether it's by ordinance or by ballot measure, retail operations in their city, it's not universal. It's spotty. It's, diff you know, it's not majority of cities. And that may change years from now, but again, I just see that as Prop 64 not necessarily being a call to action for all cities to have legal operations, sorry, retail operations in the city. So you can look at it as a land use question if, if you'd like, um, because that is oftentimes how we in planning separate subject matter from operations, uh, because the operations impacts land use. And I may have just convoluted the whole thing, but it is really um, oftentimes how we look at things. So quick question, I know there are four hands up. Shall I read the rest of the questions? Uh, Dave hasn't weighed in. So Dave, how about we hear from you and then maybe we can go on to the other questions and come back to this. I'm gonna throw out the very unpopular opinion of we should move on. It's been 40 minutes in this meeting. We have two hours and 20 minutes remaining, we should move on and circle back to this because we are just going around in circles. We have a lot to cover. We have a lot to discuss. And, you know, right now it feels like everyone's trying to split hairs and get their point across. And I think we get everybody's point. We need to get through the rest of the information and come back and talk about this. Awesome. Let's do that. Let's do that. So the other questions, I'll just read them out and then, op and then open it up for your open discussion. The next is, does, this, does the group support the cannabis initiative, which is the tracker initiative? 
does the group support keeping the current cannabis ban? In the event city council desires a competing initiative, should the competing initiative include a taxation component? In the event there is no competing initiative, should there be a standalone tax measure? And then you have attachment three, which is the tax state tax breakdown. The next question is, what should the city's cannabis tax be? Should the city council adopt a new cannabis ordinance prior to the November election to allow cannabis delivery and or retail or other? And you have the attachment on CUP conditions that another city had included in its own regulations. You can look at those and we can put them up on screen share and um, you can identify some or none or all that you think would be appropriate should the city have an ordinance or a competing measure. So I can open it up from there. Um, to invite your discussion, I can screen share the questions if that's helpful also. Nathan. Yeah, in the spirit of keeping it moving, I think we can answer and probably vote on the does the group support the cannabis initiative question. So we can take that one off the table since we got to, you know, unanimity la the last last time. Well, let me ask Dave. Um, Dave, do you love the initiative? We're talking about the currently. Yeah. Uh, uh, I do not support it. Okay. I do not support it. All right, so then that's unanimous. Lauren? City Attorney Lauren. Oh, I just wanted to point out, um, Suja mentioned earlier, I think probably the best approach is to have all the conversations hear from the public mm -hmm. and then take final then votes take at vote. the end yeah. of the meeting after you've after the public's had an opportunity to weigh in. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. That's what I should do. Tom. Yeah, I had a, a, a question for Lauren. Then if um, so if the council were to not go forward with a competing initiative or ordinance, but but placed a standalone uh, tax initiative uh, on the ballot that would go along with this initiative uh, that I think none of us like. What would happen if both passed? Uh, my assumption is, is is that the tax would then be in effect uh, because the current initiative doesn't contemplate any taxes, it just contemplates some sort of donation. And so is that a correct assumption or, or would it have to pass by more votes than, than the initiative? That, that was my question. I think that's my understanding as well. I don't believe a tax measure competes with the initiative measure because the initiative measures a licensing process in order, and it's a zoning and a licensing topic and it doesn't really cover taxation. So I think, um, I think they are not competing and that they could both pass with the required number of votes. Thank you. Dave? Yeah, I just actually wanted uh, to get on record that when I'm stating my opinion, that is my opinion. It's not the opinion of the chamber. The chamber is actually officially neutral on this. Uh, they don't have, uh, the chamber has, the board has no opinion one way or the other. Um, so when I'm speaking, it's as a resident and uh, business owner. Got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any thoughts on the tax measure? We had discussed either a range uh, up to, there was a discussion about um, leaving that so that there is discretion at the council's on the council's part, Andrea? Um, as we discussed last time, uh, I would be in favor of having a tax that had a not to exceed number such as 10%, which gives the, the city council the ability to adjust the tax rate based on current conditions, as opposed to having to run a ballot initiative and either paying for a special election, which is very expensive, or having to wait maybe two years um, until the next election so that we don't incur that extra special election cost. So I think the most prudent thing is 
if the if the initiative that we don't care for passes then we should have a tax law and i think it should be the most flexible initiative that we can put together and i think that's pretty much what we said last time but i could be wrong yeah matt couldn't have said it better i think the flexibility to go up and down is really important cammy you're on mute, Kenny. Uh, well said. So I was going to say, could we do, because we're talking about the tax measure, so could we do the question, in the event they desire a competing initiative, should it include a taxation component? And in the event there is no competing initiative, should there be a standalone tax measure? I, I think that was unanimous. So I was just going to say, could we go to those two questions, because we're talking about taxes now, then you can get specific on what should the tax be. And now we've kind of done three questions, staying focused on the tax and be done with those. Because I don't think there was any disagreement, if I remember. There, I don't believe there was either. Um, Dave was not here. And so um, we didn't hear from Dave on the tax piece. So go ahead, Dave. Um, and it, this might be might have been covered. I apologize if I'm, I'm catching up on it, but um, the was a range discussed as being a, a, a variable range based on adult retail or adult use retail or medical retail. Um, would that be a, uh, the chart shows that some places tax it differently and other places have the same tax so applied that, to both? That wasn't part of the discussion here. Matt, do you remember that differently? No, I was just going to chime in, and it was, I mean, we, we never really discussed medical versus versus adult use, um, but I think it was more about in the event that the state gives some sort of a reprieve for state taxes, that it, it was more about keeping the, the market competitive to eliminate the illicit market, not put a stranglehold on the, on the, the legal market, but just to try to keep parity and to allow for some flexibility to maintain that parity so that it would succeed in Hermosa Beach. And is, is the, that is is the, is the state uh, tax different on medical or versus retail, uh, adult retail? That's a, that's a good question. I know that cities, some cities are saying zero tax for medical and um, you know, then for adult use, it's almost like a sin tax. Right. Um, and but other other cities are allowing for it. I don't know about the state, well, I think um, but but the state is actually looking at a reprieve, or yeah. some sort of a reprieve. So that's all. I, I think it's. I mean, obviously, the medical is um, very different than the the recreational use, and I would be for calling those out as separate taxes and and having the lower uh, tax, if any, on the medical for sure. I think Jonathan's numbers gave us that there were 3,700 actual, I mean, may, you guys can correct me, but I think it was like 3,700 actual medical card holding patients in the state of California. So the number's pretty small, but I think that if we just can allow for, we can agree that we can allow for flexibility up and down for medical adult use, and we just, we address it as we, we build the program. I mean, would anybody disagree with that? Okay. Tom, thank you, Matt. Yeah, just kind of riffing off what Matt was talking about a little bit. You know, I'm all for the flexibility on the rate. I, I think um, whether it's a standalone tax or, or something attached to a competing ordinance or whatever may happen, I, I think tactically we should advise the council um, to be careful with that because the writers of this initiative are they're they're going to lead with it's more expensive if you vote for this additional tax or it's more expensive if you if you vote for this competing uh, ordinance or or uh, initiative uh, and so I think well I think we want to be flexible in the rate I think we got to uh, be tactical and strategic that that they're going to lead with. Hey, vote for this initiative because your cannabis will be cheaper. Um, 
and, and, and so we want to get the tax to cover the impacts um, and the way that they've written it is just laughable as far as a donation, but, but we got to be careful with how they're going to spend it. So I, I think a double digit number is going to, could spook people um, just in looking at the list of, of different taxes. Um, you know, a double digit one is not going to, you know, look good on a, on a pamphlet that's being misused by the writers of the initiative. Heidi? Um, I just want to point out, and this is something that we've talked about before, just want to remind everyone that um, just because it says it's medical doesn't mean that, that, I mean, medical is how the 18 to 20 year olds are getting their hands on marijuana. They, at 18, they can get their medical marijuana card with not too much difficulty. And that 18 to 20 year old can go ahead and get himself or herself a whole bunch of product and then turn around and sell it at school. And so this is medical marijuana card is how uh, one of the ways in Colorado, especially they found that they created drug dealers at school. And so they are working right now to change this access. And this is something that's going to be addressed here in California as well. So just wanna be sure everybody's aware of that link. And that's one of the other reasons why we really don't want fruity looking products because it attracts this medical youth crowd and also creates these uh, drug dealers. So anyway. Thank you. Andrea. In uh, the Easy Reader, um, Elliot was quoted as saying that their initiative was to get uh, licensing available so they could open dispensaries here and that whether or not a city wanted to tax was not their concern or business, that was the city. And that when we talked about the tax initiative, it would be freestanding if the ban was in place and the, but the tax was passed, it would stay there and not be used. And if in, sometime in the future, we passed an initiative to allow for a dispensary, then the tax was in place. So whether or not we have a dispensary or not, it would be on the books if it was passed by the people. Correct. So that gives the city the most flexibility and put the not to exceed. So it could be 1% or it could be 10% based on the situation at the time with how things are going. And so that's, that's the way I understood it from the last meetings and from what I've read in, in the newspapers, which have been covering this quite a bit. Lauren? Oh, I just wanted to answer a question that was asked a few minutes ago, and that is um, uh, my research shows that the, both the sales and use tax and the cannabis excise tax at the state level don't apply to medicinal marijuana. Um, Lauren, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty hearing you. Can you say yeah. that again? It, it might be me, it might be my headset. I just said that, um, my research shows that the sales and use tax on cannabis and the state cannabis excise tax do not apply to medical marijuana sales. Okay. So they are treated differently under the tax rules at the state level. Thank you. Thank you. Russ? On mute. Damn mute button. Um, want to agree with several of uh, the people who, who spoke about uh, flexibility wanted to note that we're at the beginning of this. There are a lot of forces at work above us at the federal and state level and the county level um, that are frankly a little schizophrenic right now. And it would be, I think, foolish to lock ourselves in at the outset, not knowing what all those entities are gonna do uh, down the line. And just wanted to state that the flexibility piece is critical. Excellent. Terrific. Does anyone want to see any of the questions on screen share or any of the CUP restrictions? We can go to public comment next and then come back to the group for discussion. Why don't we do that? And do you wanna open us up for public comment? Yes, thank you, Sujat. Um, if I could just get a motion first to 
He's even filed a written communication. So moved. Was that Nathan? Yes, that was. Nathan and Andrew. And I'll do roll call the Matt Patrol. Hey. Russ Gilbert. Aye. Nathan Tribble. Aye. Heidi Swan. Aye. Tammy Herbert. Aye. Andrea Valcourt. Aye. Jason Johnson. You may have stepped away. Tom Backley. Aye. Dave Davis. Aye. Jason, do you approve the rent communication? Yes, aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Now is the time for public comment. If you wish to speak, please raise your virtual hand. You have three minutes to speak, and the first speaker is Jonathan Spectro. Good evening, everyone. This is Jonathan here. I just want to thank you all so much again for taking all the time over the last several weeks and doing a deep dive to understand this incredibly nuanced, incredibly um, complicated topic. Uh, the thing that I would like to kind of impress upon all of you and kind of see uh, in your considerations going forward, what we're really looking to do is seeing if the city does not want to uh, support the outside hostile initiative, then what is going to be the most likely successful alternative to that? I think one of the things that the committee is uh, certainly uh, identified is going to be the allowance of a tax to bring in tax revenues into the city. I also believe that attack, attaching some sort of regulations to that tax will allow to be the most successful way to combat this outside initiative. In all your deliberations here, to me, it seems to make the most sense at this moment right now to consider uh, starting this as, for lack of better words, as a pilot program. And what I mean by that is to start uh, to recommend to the city council to go ahead and tax but to start with the things that we can't stop that we already know, which is the outside delivery. The enforcement of that is difficult. It's going to be happening on there. And yet at the same time, we can set up a mechanism to be able to license those outside operators to come and declare themselves and be able to collect the revenues that are coming in for that. If there was a tax, if there was a ballot that was to be recommended going forward that would likely have the most success, success against this outside initiative, it would be one that would allow for outside delivery to tax it and still maintain full control for the council to consider at a future date if and when to allow any other types of licenses in the future. The benefits of this is ultimately that you're getting all of the benefits of the revenues and you're eliminating all of the headaches that the city is going to have to have when it comes to land use issues, where you're going to locate these businesses, what are the buffer zones for them, what is the selection process going to be. And all the things that you guys have learned and have brought up over this time have targeted towards us, have identified all the problematic issues that still remain within actually allowing retail licenses within the city itself, meaning the storefronts. If the city of Hermosa Beach within the time that's allotted here for us to, as a city, consider what is the best way to combat and give a better alternative for the residents to look at forward, I want to highly recommend that you consider the outside delivery being allowed tax in there, again, getting all the benefits of that without any of the administrative headaches that come with allowing for legal shops within the city at this time, and still retaining that power on a local control for the city to determine at a later date in the future if that is a better way to look at seeing what other activities are to be allowed. Thank you all for your consideration again, and thank you all sincerely for the time that you guys have put into this process. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, we have Carolyn Petty. Hi, Anne. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so I just want to make mention of a few things. First, I want to say that my recommendation is that it's not as much of a cap on tax. It should be a floor. And the reason there should be a floor is because there will be impacts. It will cost the city money. When people vote for a tax initiative, they are going to assume that at a minimum, there's going to be some amount of tax collected, and they're going to hope that the taxes offset the cost to the city. At least there is a cost to the city. So I really don't agree with this concept of being concerned about a cap. It really should be a floor because people will have some expectation that some money will accrue to the city. So I wanted to note that. The other thing that I wanted to note from a land use perspective, I would say that this is not the kind of land use that we would want in our city that once a marijuana establishment opens in a shop, 
it's known and this is documented that the smells are really hard to get out. We know that when a marijuana shop opens in a community, there's increased property crime in the We know that when a marijuana shop uh, opens up in a community, youth usage increases. We know, and this has been studied, that youth have been asked if they saw a marijuana outlet in their city, there would be an increased uh, tendency to want to try marijuana. So from a pure land use perspective, this really runs counter to the way that we kind of roll as a city, which is being more concerned about health. Um, and I guess that I'm um, just trying to think of anything else since I have a minute left. Um, I, I just want to make one last comment and it was written communications. I feel that one of the most important questions that was posed at the last meeting was conspicuously absent from the staff report. Um, maybe you guys addressed this at the start of the meeting, but I came on to the meeting late, so I just want to make sure that that was addressed and the meetings were corrected and that the staff report to the city council will be uh, corrected and illuminated so they understand. Thank you very much, and I appreciate everybody serving on the group. Thank you, Carolyn. If you would like to speak, please raise your virtual hand. Next, we have Ashley Toll. Hi, good afternoon. I uh, just wanted to again say thank you for doing this. This is a, a community service that uh, I wish I would have been chosen for, but hey, that's you know the luck of the draw. Uh, <clears throat> I want to say that I think it's interesting the fear mongering that's going around uh, that is surrounding this initiative. Some people, I mean, uh, I'll just the last caller, Carolyn, uh, one of the the uh, people sitting on the board here, your your fear mongering around marijuana is if it's if it's child porn, I mean, or if it's heroin. This is a, a very legal, very safe drug that's been proven to be legal and proven to be safe all over the state of California. I mean, it, it's everywhere. And in, you're you're standing on the wrong side of history here. This is, as a cancer survivor, I would have loved to have marijuana delivered to me, but, but have no fear during my stage four cancer, someone went and illegally purchased it for me to help me get through it at the advice of my doctor. So, I mean, the it, science is, is showing us that cannabis helps people with cancer. Standing against the cannabis initiative is standing against people who are trying to be treated for, for their ailments, for, their, for things that they need, anxiety, depression, cancer. All of these things have been proven to be helped by medical cannabis. I, I would like to know, uh, one of the members stated earlier that there's a link to medical uh, marijuana cards and and child drug dealers in high school. Please cite your sources. As a UCLA grad, I would love to research this. Uh, I didn't hear any sources cited. I just heard um, the comment, to, you know, being made, and no source cited. So I would I would love for you to cite your sources when you're going to be speaking to the community on uh, such a big initiative that could really change and impact the city. Um, and again, thank you for your service. I appreciate everything you're doing here. Um, and and uh, don't forget that um, just because you live in Hermosa and you can go legally buy something in Torrance, that it doesn't mean that it's not gonna be in Hermosa. It's all over Hermosa. We get it delivered. Everyone is here saying that it's getting delivered. It's where you want that money to come. Do you want it to go to members of your community, business owners in your community, or would you like for it to keep going to people outside of this community or as one of the advisory group members suggested would you like us to commit crimes and illegally purchase it from our neighbors so i appreciate that friendly advice but uh i'd rather not go to jail uh to help you know feed the need for medical marijuana uh thank you thank you ashley if anyone would like to speak please raise your virtual hand Okay, we have Laura Pena. Hi, this is Laura, can you hear me? Yes, Laura, go ahead. Hi, this is Laura Pena. I'm a resident, I'm a business owner. Um, 
and I just want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody because I've been attending all these meetings, I've provided public comment, and all of you have provided extraordinary amounts of time, effort, and resources to this conversation. So I, I just can't thank you all enough uh, per, for performing this act of service to our community. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting is I always go back to what's the goal here. And hopefully the goal, one of the goals is to provide our city council with recommendations that they can act upon. And I've been looking at some of the attachments that have been provided. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting is on the evaluation checklist for cannabis, law, cannabis laws and regulations, policies to avert the emergence of this new tobacco-like industry. And one of them is to prohibit conflict of interest in our regulatory bodies and adv advisory commissions. And as I've been listening to these meetings, it is apparent to me that people on this committee have very different views. And I think that's important. But what I'm concerned at is you guys are taking votes or polling, and it's obvious that some of you are for and some of you are against. And there have been public statements about this. So one of the goals of Plan Hermosa is to try to create a consensus making process. There was no way this advisory board was going to be able to do that in regards to this ban on pot. And it is not up for me to decide whether we ban pot or not. That is up to the community, that is up to the voters, and that is where it should be. I want us to provide our council with tools. I want us to fight this initiative. I want us to have more local control. So do I recommend the city draft its own ordinance? Absolutely. In my last comment last uh, time we met, I said, let's weigh the pros and cons. What I meant was pros and cons of whether we should do a development agreement or this ordinance. We need to provide flexibility. I liked the prior uh, commenter's uh, suggestion about having a floor on this taxes. That I think would be very helpful because we need to be able to beat this initiative. And if people wanna keep the ban on pot, they'll vote no. Would I recommend that the ordinance drafted by the city include a tax measure? Absolutely. Should the council place a tax measure on the ballot on its own? Absolutely. What would be helpful to our community if there was some statement that this body, this advisory group, could come to a consensus on and say, look it, this is where we agree. And if the city is going to produce any public information, please make sure that it's balanced on both sides. Don't have it be propaganda. Let's have the facts and let's have the facts on both sides. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. If anyone else would like to speak, please raise your hand. I did not see any other hands raised. Okay, wanted to thank members of the public for joining us and for providing public comment. Let's bring it back to the group. So we have, I think, a table of the questions previously asked that we can just put up and um, go through them and then add additional questions as well. And do you wanna want to, I mean? Let's take a minute to take a look at this. Okay. And then the two questions down below are on the taxes and And then whether the council should adopt an ordinance prior to the November election outside of the election process. All right. Shall we go through these? Okay. Is there any, anyone else that wants to provide any other 
There we go. Yeah, so there are there are a few hands up. Um, I noticed that this question is different than what's in the summary in the agenda for this session. The first question in the polled questions is, is there a cannabis access problem in Hermosa Beach? And the majority opinion was no. And this question is, do Hermosa Beach residents have access to legal cannabis, which is an, an, a unanimous row of yeses. And so I think, uh, voila, like we understand now why this question was, was very different and, and confusing to folks at the beginning, because these aren't the same questions, I think. Okay. Yeah. And okay, Matt. I Ag agreed with Nathan's comment there that it is a it's a qualified response. Um, I just posed this to the committee. I, I wrote this um, statement a while ago. Uh, could we agree with this? Um, we acknowledge that although it is not literally possible to purchase legal cannabis within the city, while standing within the city limits of Hermosa, that it does not seem to be a problem to gain access to cannabis from the areas surrounding Hermosa Beach or from delivery services that are not licensed to deliver within Hermosa Beach, but seem to be delivering at this time. I know that's super wordy. Maybe we could just agree on some verbiage here that we could I mean, it, that's that's the spirit of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. We have access to legal cannabis by going outside of the city limits of Hermosa Beach, but you cannot purchase legal cannabis within the city limits limits of Hermosa Beach. So that was my first comment there. Um, I would also caution us, what should the city cannabis tax be? I don't think we want to come close to trying to figure that equation out right now, but that's just my thought. Those are my thoughts right now. Sorry. And the group on the tax piece, the group could just recommend to the council that there should be a tax and let the council um, work through that. And Matt, I think uh, what you were offering is sort of that context and caveat statement that might go below that first question. So committee members can think about that and, and either um, say yes or no, or some amended version of that you can recommend, Russ the button. Yep. yep. Um, I hate to belabor this first question after spending 40 minutes on it, um, but I, I want to try to cut to the core issue, and that is, would it be possible to split the question about delivery from the question about a storefront? Because mm -hmm. I don't know that, so, so you know, the, the reason that we're asking do they have access is, is something that Andrea's touched on, is like, why are we doing this at all? Um, and the answer I mean, you could throw one word in that and you'd get a different answer from us. Do they have adequate access to legal cannabis? I'm not sure that I would answer yes to that. Um, if delivery was not part of the ban um, and a storefront was, I think we would all maybe take different positions. And I, I'm wondering if we might split those two issues entirely mm -hmm. um, rather than spend another 40 minutes trying to wordsmith that question. Sure. So how would you split the two questions? What are the two questions? Um, so, so, at, so first question is, do they have adequate access to legal cannabis now? And I, I, I would say, honestly, if, uh, you know, my, my next door neighbor is quite old and, uh, just had cancer surgery and is probably not going to leave the house anytime soon. And I would say, even with a storefront here, he wouldn't have adequate access without delivery being available to him. Um, then I would say, um, uh, yeah, just to legal cannabis. And then we, we talk about the group supporting the cannabis initiative. And I would ask two additional questions. One, does the group support having a brick and mortar storefront or one or more brick and mortar storefronts? And two, does the group support lifting the ban on delivery? Okay. Thank you. Um, Dave? Just to continue this madness, um, the question I think is really the point that we're trying to get at is does not having a retail storefront in Hermosa cause hardship for Hermosa residents? Mm -hmm. 
that's kind of because all the other stuff is just it, it's accessible. You can get delivery. You can go to another town. But really, what we're talking about is by not having something in Hermosa, is that creating an issue for residents of Hermosa? Isn't that what we're talking about? Maybe I'm missing the point. No, and I and I think that gets to the intent of the original question, how it was framed is, um, but yes. And so depending on the consensus of the group, you know, you could further refine the question into two or three parts and, and have and, and provide your answers to that rather than trying to get to one universal question that everyone can agree to. Okay, thanks. Um, Andrea? Yeah, um, I wanna make a comment. It was said that 71% um, of the people in Hermosa voted for Prop 64, allowing for legal uh, legalization of marijuana. And I don't, and even though that's true, the ban that was passed by the city was not hugely fought by the 71% of the people. So I think that's kind of a false, what's the word I wanna use? The, a false equivalent. Because we can't, I mean, I voted for it because I didn't like the fact that people who were having a joint now and again got caught and they go to jail for a long period of time. The laws were not equitable. So I thought, well, okay, I'll vote for this, but I, I don't think we necessarily have to have dispensaries everywhere. So I think that saying that 71%, therefore, we must have dispensaries in the city is a false equivalent. And, and that's not something that we should necessarily um, uh, take to the bank. And I would agree that it, we could, I, I would agree with splitting the question into maybe two or three groups. Um, although, yeah, I guess that would be fine. Okay. And, and I and I like the question that whether or not we should keep the ban in general, mm -hmm. because I think it's not good for our families. It's not represented that taking the ban away is not representative of who Hermosans have said we are, because we have already banned things that were bad for our health and we've become a blue zone city. So this allowing for the dispensaries is not within keeping that we've made smoking illegal and uh, flavored tobacco products illegal in the hopes of keeping our children um, out of trouble in their in their younger years. So, thank you. Thank you, Matt. I was just thinking as I was listening to. Dave's comments, Nathan's, uh, or, um, and Russ's, uh, this whole concept of delivery, we can acknowledge that delivery is happening. I mean, I think we can all agree that it's happening in Hermosa Beach. We are not getting any tax revenue from it. And even though I can debate all day long that I believe that a retail store is safer than a delivery, for many reasons, because the brick and mortar facilities are, you know, there's more security, there's all the things we've talked about in the past. At the very least, what we can say is that it's being delivered in Hermosa Beach and there's no way to enforce it currently, or we're, we're not enforcing it. So I, I like this idea of, should, we, should Hermosa lift the ban on cannabis delivery? And there's two ways of doing that. We could either allow it or, the public commentary, Jonathan, the very first caller, had a good idea, I thought, which was allow for outside delivery companies kind of to apply or uh, apply for or pay for a permit to deliver within. 
So maybe they're paying a tax within. But if we know that this is happening and there's no way to enforce it, is it possible for us to pull or to, to maybe just kind of take a, everybody's temperature on how would we feel about just a, for right now saying, okay, what if we were to allow for delivery and delivery was going to be taxed at whatever rate the city council, whoever figures it out. I mean, can we kind of take everybody's temperature on that? We know it's happening and we can't deny that it's happening and we're not benefiting as a community. Would it be okay if we asked what everybody thought of that? We can add that to the questions. And if you recall, I think it was Cami toward the end of the last meeting who raised the issue of non-storefront delivery only model. Uh, I think that's the right way to put it, where it's, you don't do you don't have walk-ups, but they establish as the delivery only business with a, a proper permit from the city. So we can ask that question. Yeah, and I like Ross has these comments in the chat right now, and I think that we could put those into we could categorize them and I, we could rip through that chart very quickly and take everybody's temperature. Yeah. Sorry, Thank I know you. that was long winded, but I just keep thinking about the fact that it's happening. There's no way around it at this point. Even our law enforcement says we really can't enforce it. Okay. Jason. Uh, thanks. I just kind of trying to build on uh, moving us forward with process uh, that uh, one question I have is, is just, you know, as far as our deliverables, I mean, like, because, like, you know, the, the committee, my understanding is the committee's job is to make recommendations to the city council. Like, that's, that is the premise of our role. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. So, you know, to me, like, we're, you know, we're, we're moving through these questions, but, like, ultimately, it seems that we're not going to, it'd be very unlikely based off of the meetings that we're going to have a clear consensus mm -hmm. recommendation. So in turn, like the recommendation is likely going to be the answer to these questions and mm -hmm. our responses. Is that relatively accurate? Correct. Okay. So then my, my question would be for the question one, which I think is generating a lot of this conversation to me, like it seems that there's disagreement on, you know, what is the premise of the question and will that miss message mean like the recommendations be put forward to the city council? And to me, like the, the problematic word, just for a language here is, uh, depending on the various phrases of this question that have been brought up, is hardship, need, and access. Now, I'm sure we could talk that through, but like those seem to be like the premise words that are difficult. And I think that one of the reasons is, is it kind of does get away from what our role is because like we're trying to like take census of like what is hardship I mean like what is the need I mean like you know what is access and really our role is just putting forward I mean like you know like our recommendations you know to action right what the city council can actually do so I, I guess what I would ask is you know is the initial question necessary in order to make recommendations for action to the city council I would argue no. I agree that it, it establishes a lot of premise, but I think that what we've established in our eight, nine meetings is that there is not a clear consensus on the committee. So I would move to, to strike that first question and focus on what are actual action-based recommendations to the committee. But I don't think that question is one. Thank you. All right, I'm um, sorry, Matt. Sorry, I left it up. Oh, okay, Heidi. Um, I would just like to make a suggestion regarding tax when we're talking about the floor that uh, whatever tax should cover the extra cost to police and other things like impaired driving. Uh, costs are going to be expensive. Um, so I would like to, I, I don't think it, we can ask for a study, but that's just something that um, I think we have to be sure that whatever tax we're having is, is covering that. Um, uh, when the ban was passed in Hermosa Beach, when the, the city council wrote its own ordinance, passed it to protect the community, there was not one single comment opposed to the ban. So when people say, well, you voted for it by 71%, 
that doesn't necessarily mean that people were really gung ho for marijuana. Nobody was upset about the ban. Um, and not only that, but we have to remember how much things have changed between 2015, 16, and 2022. When I voted in favor of legalization, they promised the black market would go away. The black market is bigger. They promised they would provide recommendations on impaired driving. They didn't do it. Impaired driving has increased. Youth use, they promised, would stay the same. Youth use has gone up. So things have, and the products themselves have changed from what we voted for. Concentrates weren't huge on the market the way they are today. So when we say you voted for it, we were voting for something completely different and all the promises uh, were not fulfilled. So that makes it more dangerous. It makes it more dangerous to come into Hermosa Beach today. And especially because the legal market is mixed with the illegal market and we should be 100% opposed. And we are also in a very serious drought and we should not be supporting a product that is so water intensive. And um, so we really have to uh, be concerned about California's environment and then the destruction uh, of our state and our wild our wildlife, excuse me. So. Thank you, Heidi. Russ? Oh, and okay. I'm sorry, one last thing. So um, in the, whoever made a comment that um, I didn't provide any data, I think you guys all know, I provide data for pretty much everything I say. And so in Colorado, there was a bill that is now law called HB 1317. And it addresses all of the problems they've had with these high potency marijuana products, including the uh, abuse of uh, teenagers getting medical marijuana cards and reselling it to younger kids. So that is one of the reasons why HB 1317, which also provides warning labels for these high potency products. That is why we have a bill in our California Senate now to provide warning labels, because like some people think it's entirely safe. It's not. Emergency room visits have gone up, as Dr. Walsh told us, Dr. Wallace told us last week. So anyway, thank you. Sorry. It's okay. Thanks, Heidi. Russ. I just want to comment that my, my understanding about the ban that we have now, uh, same as in Redondo and, and a lot of our surrounding cities, was not a ban. On, it's, it's not a ban on use, and it is not a ban. It, the, the reason that it exists is because this is a complicated issue. Uh, it, is a, it is one that, that needs careful thought and deliberation. And the idea of just throwing over the, open the doors and let it be the Wild West, um, as far as um, dispensaries were concerned, um, seemed like a bad idea to pretty much everybody. Um, and you know, they, they basically, that was designed to give the city time to make a plan and work, uh, you know, work through and, and figure out how they're gonna manage this. Um, you know, obviously government moves at the speed of government and um, sometimes you get things that are just absurd that come out of Sacramento and of course, Washington DC and the, and, and the county. Um, but the idea that we should just say, let's just not do it. Let's not try to attempt to manage it. That doesn't track to me at all. And I, I think the reason that you didn't see in 2018 at Prop 64, um, this massive outcry is, is there was no such thing as a legal delivery service. There was no such thing as a legal dispensary. Those things existed in the gray market and in the black market. Um, and going back to this first question that we have all spent so much time on, um, effectively people do have access to cannabis. Um, legally um, and practically are two different things. Uh, and that's what we've got to figure out because if we don't um, remove the ban, there is no way for the government to manage it, period. If it's banned, the government has to pretend it doesn't exist. Um, and it, it always is going to. Thank you. Any other comments? So what we can do is add some, break this up and add some of those other questions that had come up into this. Oh, one second. I think um, 
Anne's already added, do Hermosa residents have adequate access to legal cannabis? Should Hermosa lift the ban on cannabis delivery? Should Hermosa lift a ban on cannabis storefronts was another question. Are there any other questions um, to break up this initial one that you'd like added? The first two questions are the same. They're, they're not. Um, the, the question of access and adequate oh, access. Oh, I see. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. That's okay. It's just one word. Yes, my one of my bosses used to say, read all the words before you come to me. <laughs> And adding that, I did want to, I had assured Dr. Wallace that he'd be able to speak during public comment. I, uh, we may have miscommunicated when public comment was. I see that he is on, I thought I saw him. Uh, if, after, and after you finish entering that, let's, um, see if Dr. Wallace would like Su to. Suja, I'm, I'm on the call, I, I'm here. Okay, um, why don't we go ahead and take your comment, Dr. Wallace, um, and we'll start the clock and. Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, I sent a, um, a letter to the committee, um, which included uh, bullet points of um, what I thought from evidential point of view would be the effect of having uh, retail cannabis operations in the in the city, and then secondly, I sent uh, the original letter I had sent uh, to City Council in November, in which I I, I spent great detail um, listing uh, evident again evidence based effects of uh, marijuana use on uh, uh, cognition, developing brains, um, etc. But I do want to uh, re re reiterate, excuse me, um, uh, the following points, uh, and that is that um, that I think the effect of having um, dispensaries in the city is going to be a cost uh, to the city that is not being considered, including EMS, ambulance, police. It certainly is going to affect the emergency room in terms of emergency room gridlock. Um, so that's uh, one point I'd like to reiterate. Secondly, <clears throat> I think there's um, a, a lot of misconception because th to me, there are kind of two issues. And the first one is, uh, should cannabis use be legal? And that ship has already sailed. So, um, and the second one is, should there be um, retail operations in such a small town as Hermosa Beach um, without um, causing any damage to the community, uh, the character of the community and, and our youth. And, and the answer to that is, um, I think that indeed uh, would happen. But I think there's a lot of misconception. And I think if I had to guess, speaking as a citizen and a physician, I would say that probably a lot of uh, the majority of residents in Hermosa are not against cannabis use being legal, but they are against the effects on our community. And I would just like to add on the misconception that when the petition was being circulated, it, what the p petition was, was, was misrepresented. Uh, and this happened to me personally, as I was on my deck and I was approached and I was told that this, this initiative was to regulate marijuana and it was gonna make the city a lot of money. And I exposed uh, the petitioner and he moved on. Uh, and then lastly, I just kind of want to uh, reference the sad, uh, uh, story of the passing of Taylor Hawkins, who had uh, 10 drugs, the drummer for Foo Fighters had 10 drugs in his system, including uh, THC. And I'm not saying THC was causative of his death, um, but you know, I think it suggests that people who do THC may well do other drugs as well. And people who do what they think is THC may be getting other drugs. And I think that's a, a, a real a risk to the community. 
Thank you, Dr. Wallace. Thanks for giving me five extra seconds, TJ. All right. Um, and since I took, we took Dr. Wallace's comments, I, I let's just open it back up and be sure if anyone else who hasn't already spoken has a chance to speak. We have one hand up, I know. Ken, Ken Allen, would you like to be on screen? Yeah, I, I would, are you there? Yes. I, I would just like to dispel this myth that, um, I mean, first of all, we got two single white males and uh, another pusher pushing on marijuana. And we have, you know, kind of like the normal mainstream parents, um, homeowners, uh, business owner. Well, I mean, one business owner, I don't know about him. <laughs> but, you know, I'd like to dispel this myth. There is no problem getting marijuana, okay? I don't smoke marijuana. I can make two phone calls and I could go on the internet and find exactly where to get it. Um, I don't think that it's like a big deal, like because you can't go to your corner, can't go around the block. You know, I have a bird feeder out here I'm looking at and, uh, you know, it's kind of a pain in the neck for me. I, I have to go to a store to get, to get bird feed. Why don't we have, uh, why don't we have a bird feed dispensary? in Hermosa Beach. Shouldn't it be right that there should be bird feed dispensaries in Hermosa Beach? No, of course not. Everybody, anybody who wants marijuana can get marijuana. It, you know, I'm sorry for the one person in town that the, the few people in town that have a special need. If you have cancer, yeah, we want you to have your marijuana. Of course we do. Okay. We, we, we nobody denies that people want it. Okay, the people that need it should get it. Nobody denies that. But uh, it just, it's just very disturbing to me that we have people like Russ Gilbert, who is you know, like, he has no investment in this town, trying to uh, tell us people who have major, I have millions of dollars invested in this town. Okay, he has nothing other than a 30 day notice to his landlord, or maybe he has at least, maybe it's a year, who knows. Why are, we, why are we listening to these people? Why aren't we listening to people that have like a real stake in the community? People who have children, people who own houses, people who own businesses. Why are we not listening to them? Why, are, why is a person like Russ Gilbert on this thing? He, he should have no place on this whatsoever. By the way, he's about to be sued uh, this week, I understand, from an attorney in Northern California. Just want to get that on the table uh, for some of his nefarious actions that he's been working on. Anyways, that's all I got. Thank you. Last call for public comment. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand. I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, that was terrific, thank you. Let's go ahead and um, can you bring that back up on screen, Anne? Is there agreement that these are the questions, any other questions you'd like to pose within the group and then offer the responses to the council if you think that's pertinent to their deliberation for next steps. Cami? I don't know if it's a question, but I do want to make sure it kind of gets potentially if the group okays it um, of going to the council because we did spend a lot of time talking, okay, let's say the majority voted keep the ban, but then we also were talking about, okay, if the city council though doesn't want to do, doesn't want to follow that, and they want to have um, their own initiative, I, I do feel like we should give some actionable notes to that as well, that, because I think um, while we have our 
opinion on many of these things. We do still need to give action items. And so we did talk about, yes, we like these regulations. And then you put them in the, um, you know, in the memo, but then how does that kind of get to them? Because I mean, there wasn't even anything about no cultivation, no cultivating a lot. So I guess I just want to make sure somewhere, are they going to get this other note of if you guys decide to do an initiative, we think X, 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 and X. So you put it in the agenda, but how do they get that note? So I want to make sure I guess our notes on that, because I do feel like we do need to do that as a group to be actionable in case they decide to go that route. Sure. So a couple of things. Uh, one, I, I was just reminded uh, as you're speaking, we should add to this list of questions the, um, the question of whether the group supports a non-storefront delivery model. I think that's a type, type nine, um, non-storefront non delivery. And so we can add that. And then to answer your question, Cami, the group can certainly do that. We can take a, if separate and apart from your opinions on all these questions, if the, if the council decided to draft its own ordinance or the council decided to place a competing measure, what are, what are the group members' recommendations on what should be included or excluded? We, can, we will take notes on that and provide that. Um, so this table is not to circumvent sharing as much detail as possible for other things that, that were discussed. Um, this is just a snapshot of some of the higher level questions that you're getting to. But yes, we can do that. We can, we will share. And how they get the notes, it'll be part of the staff report. So um, you probably, if you have looked at staff reports on different topics, you'll see that there are different sections. There's the background section, there's the analysis section. And um, so we can uh, include, include that discussion in there. Matt? I think I'm, I'm really drawn to what should the city's cannabis tax be. And I almost, I worry that it's a little too focused. Um, with this, we, I mean, my goal would be highest probability for success. And I'm a, I'm a, I don't know, does anybody think that we can be so pointed at this point in time? Or I know people have talked about a floor and people have talked about a max, um, but I'm just wondering if that question is, is crafted the best way. Okay. Does anybody have any thoughts? Yeah, I think folks will probably have thoughts, Jason. I just on the, the, prior to the in the event city council desires a competing competing initiative should the competing initiative include a taxation component. I I would say that there needs to be the question: Should the city council create a competing initiative? Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be absent from from that, and that's never addressed, especially if we're going to discuss whether or not the details of a competing initiative, um, because I do not think that all of us are for a competing initiative. Yeah, you're right. I think the question assume, uh, addresses whether the council decides on one or not. Russ? I was just going to say, um, I feel like with these new questions, lift the ban on cannabis delivery and support a non-storefront delivery model, um, do we really need the keeping the current cannabis ban question at all? Because uh, it, it, we could end up with contradictory answers that would be uh, kind of hard to sort out. Well, I think um, I think it's fair to ask the question. And as you're answering, if you look at it in this tabular format, if there are inconsistencies, perhaps uh, folks will adjust their responses or Maybe, maybe just make it more specific. Current current cannabis ban on both storefronts and delivery. Yes, the current the current ban, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Cami. Uh, 
two things to Rutz's point. I actually, well, I don't know, me personally, I don't mind if my answers might be contradictory because again, uh, for me, this committee is an action committee. So I'm giving, here's if you go this road, I might say yes or no. Here's if the council decides to do their, you know, I mean, there's, there's six of us and there's five of them. So they could come up with something totally different. So I actually don't mind the contradictory answer. And for the taxation thing, um, that's another one that I feel like back to my thing of, can you give a little asterisk with an explanation? Because I agree you need to be, um, uh, profitable Matt, Matt's point that you gotta you can't scare everybody away and then you don't get anything but we've said with all of our experts there's a lot of things we got to cover we're going to need a new um, cannabis officer potentially for some of these regulations you're going to need you know but you're going to need more things which is why I think what should the city can cannabis tax B would be hard for this group to decide because we've got no numbers about how much a new, you know, um, officer would be and a new person at the city and groups and this and that. So I think they would have to kind of study that a little bit. So I like the range idea. Okay. Heidi. So when this is going to be presented to the city council, I'd just like to make a special request that we be put early on the agenda, that we not be late on the agenda so we're not all sitting there at midnight in case the city council has questions for us. And um, uh, so I'd like to make that special request. And when is there a time when we will be expected to be there for a city council meeting? So it's not that you'll be expected. You can choose to join during, during public comment. Council is not going to have a Q&A with committee members, um, advisory group members. So, but you may choose to make public comment or you may choose to have how uh, your participation and how it's captured stand on its own. Um, since you are a group, um, that may be something that you all decide. Okay, um, the summary, the table, the notes, you'll see what the staff report says. You can add to that through public comment if you wish, but there's no expectation that you attend a meeting. And to the special request, so these items are usually municipal matters and in the order of the agenda, it should, does show up somewhat on the later side, but count, we can let council know that there's a request to take it up earlier if they could. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Tom? You're still on mute, hold on. Just on the tax, I, I was gonna, now I think we should start answering the question because I think we're gonna run out of time tonight. And so I was just gonna answer that one, you know, what should the cannabis tax or tax range be? I, I would say flexible with a with a base of 5%. and. I mean, so I just think we should start answering the, the questions because mm -hmm. some may say 5%, some may say flexible, some may say a range. And so I, I think I would just, but let's, let's uh, let it rip and, and see where it comes oh, out. So. Okay, let's do that. Russ, you have your hand up and then, um, nope, no more. All right. I mean, so we'll, that. That's okay. So we'll do that. Um, I think Anne's done a great job in trying to capture some of these extra pieces. So on the first question, do Hermosa Beach residents have adequate access to legal cannabis? Um, if you wanna just go down as your name is uh, shown from Matt to Russ and on. Matt? Um, it's still a little qualified, I would. No. Okay. Russ? Yeah, I'd give that no. Okay. No. Ready? Yes, they do. Yes. Andrew? Yes. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. Indeed. Well, because this says legal cannabis and delivery is illegal in Hermosa, I would say no. And does the lack of a retail storefront in Hermosa Beach cause hardship to Hermosa residents? No. 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 All right. And if anyone wants to change their thought on the third question, let us know about whether you support the initiative or not. And then does the group support keeping the current cannabis ban on both storefronts and delivery? Did you guys want to, did Dave want to give an answer to that one before we do that? I know we're trying to fill this up. Uh, I do not support that. Okay. I, I just make what, uh, so do what you said is different from what's written? I'm sorry. Yeah, th yeah, this is a different question than what we voted on in last week's yes. meeting. Yes, so this, this question was reworded based on the discussion today, but it is different from last week's meeting question. We, we adjusted it based on your feedback from this meeting. So does the group- it used to say current ban, that was all it said. Now it says current ban of both storefronts and deliveries. Well, the current current ban. Anybody, that's the current, that's that the current, the current ban. ban. Just to clarify, it is on both storefronts and delivery, the current ban. It, it just clarified it. Right. Next. Should her most speech lift the ban on cannabis delivery? Yes. Thanks, Matt. Yes. Sorry. No, no. Thank you. Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 Yes. Okay. And the next question is, does the group support a non-storefront delivery model? Yes. 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 Sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no. And no. 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 Yes. So this is a can I just ask what's different between the last two yeah. questions? Yeah. Yeah. So currently there's a ban on cannabis delivery as well as cannabis storefronts. So we've just split off the question from the one above. So ah, there you go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. Sorry. Okay. And then um, the non-storefront delivery model that could, for instance, that does not have to actually be in Hermosa Beach. So you could have a, you could, you could have delivery from the city next door and still capture taxes. And now on that, let me ask Lauren Langer, um, city attorney oh, to that's, join. I'm sorry, Nathan. I'm no, not no, it's still nebulous. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I thought I got it. No, no, it's okay. I, I want Lauren to actually address the uh, tax base question first before we go too far down that path, and then I'll get back to the non storefront delivery piece. You're on mute, Nick. Thank you for that, Suja. 
Um, yeah, it's an interesting issue that's come up. So voters approve a tax rate for any type of tax that's adopted. And sometimes the voters can approve sort of a max and it allows for um, administratively for lower rates or a range of rates to be um, to be charged without having to go back to the voters. But the whole point is that the voters approve the top end and sometimes there's some flexibility on what's actually charged on a day-to-day -day basis without having to go back to the voters. So this concept of a floor is a little curious to me because in order to approve something higher than what the voters approved, you'd have to go back to the voters. So it may just be that people are using a little bit different terminology and, and saying the same thing but using different words. But the point that I think we want to get across is that the voters have to approve the maximum amount of tax that's charged, and there could be some flexibility um, at the uh, council level to charge something a little bit less or change it over time, what's actually charged, but you'd have to go back to the voters to do something higher than the maximum amount that the voters approved. So how that fits into the floor and the range and the different terminology that's used, I'm not exactly sure, but I want to I want to put that concept out there for discussion so everyone can be using the same language when you're talking about the tax rate. Got it. Does that answer your question, Suja? It does. It does. So okay. So this piece where it says flexible with a base of five percent that should be changed, correct? The base is so down below. Trouble. Seeing with the with the little boxes. Okay, let me let me move the boxes on my screen. Um. So the voters could approve, I'm just, I'm just throwing out numbers purely for example, you know, 7%, but the group could recommend or the council could say, but for the first few years, we're not going to go above 5% because the businesses need to get up and running or whatever the issue is. So that would be fine, but a base of five doesn't, doesn't exactly make sense without having to go back to the voters to get something over five approved. So I think we should um, revise that language a little bit. And, and maybe if that came from uh, Tom, maybe he wants to clarify if I'm misunderstanding the concept of the base. I mean, I'm just, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm, I don't know if we want to wait till we get to that one, but um, I think Ann was just putting in my comment because I said it earlier, but um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just concerned about making it too high because I, I think that will be used against us uh, by the people that have submitted the initiative. So maybe that word base is, is not the right word, but so I would, I would suggest a, a tax that's not too high that's gonna cause us uh, political problems with, a, with the initiative, that would be my recommendation to council. So maybe the word base would come out. That's a helpful clarification. Thank you. Okay. Thank I you. I do understand that if it were, were to go up, it would have to go back to the voters. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. And so let me see, make sure that, oh, there are questions. Okay, Matt. My question is actually for Kami. I'm, the, the last two questions, uh, should her message lift the ban on cannabis delivery and does the group support a non-storefront delivery model? Probably that I'm getting a little tired here, but um, how are you making the differentiation between the two because I'm failing to do it? Hey, Matt, what because about one is because one is having a store in Hermosa Beach and one is ordering it from Redondo or where whoever decides to make it legal. You you guys have made the point with the top two questions that it's not adequate access to legal cannabis. So I'm okay with deliver making it legal to have delivery to Hermosa Beach, to have it a store in Hermosa Beach that I have to drive by every day. I'm a no. But it's a no. It's a non-storefront delivery model. So the yeah, non-storefront, you wouldn't um, be able to access. Um, there's no store. There's no store. 
It's just um, there's no store for you're registered to do business in Hermosa Beach. Oh, I thought it was there's still going to be a building and it's not going to have any signs on it. There's no, no you're telling right. me there's not going to be a building. I was getting confused. Okay, sorry. No, yeah, well, no, I, no, no, there's no store for there's oh, Got it. well, okay. I, I was imagining, no. a, you know, there, there's still going to be a building and it's just everybody's like, what's that? There might there? be a store. I mean, I, you know, I see your point. I see your yeah. point. So let's say back on some backwards or on some street that nobody knows there's a, there's a, um, you know, a, a, a hub or something like that. So there would be, there would be a building. There might be an office. There might be a building, um, you know, it does. Here, here's, I guess, my other concern on that, which Matt, I'm glad you asked me because see, I knew the minute I gave opposite, uh, everybody was going to be confused. So I'm happy to explain it. I, my concern is also of what I thought is non storefront is it's still a building, and now they can still advertise. They can still have a, and I don't, I don't mean outside their shop. I mean now they're in the, you know, beach reporter. Now they're standing down at the Fiesta with a stand. Now they're having their, you know, happy hour sale. So I guess I imagine they're still. Got your point. So those are all things for instance. So I don't want it. Yeah. So you're right. I'm happy if it's just, you know, it's a building and they, and it's very restrictive. Mm -hmm. Then, and that's how everybody's reading that question. Because I realized I'm the only one that gave um conflicting answers there's why i gave the no because i don't want them to get a stand at all these you know every weekend down in hermosa beach so I, I, right so if, if there were restrictions just... if there were restrictions placed if i can just clarify because um some of these questions are just very straightforward but they there are nuanced thoughts about it so as can <laughs> highlights the caveats here could be from the group or a majority of the group that there are restrictions, um, no advertising, no signage, things like that. That's a is another question that we should be asking is, do we want to limit or restrict all cannabis advertising within Hermosa Beach? Mm -hmm. Is and that another question we want to ask? So let me... Um, and possibly you may. Let me ask Ken to jump in for just a second. Is Ken, Ken, are you within reach of your mic? Yes, I am here. Okay. So can you describe for us what our restrictions are on advertising? We, of course, don't allow billboards. Um, outdoor advertising, we don't allow. But um, the question about advertising, for instance, windows on on businesses and things like that could you summarize for us what is what is allowed here so i think your questions about would come from our sign code our sign ordinance not advertising okay. and that would be we do not allow off-premises advertising is i think what you're getting at so if there was a business that wanted to advertise on some sign that's not on their business location they cannot do that but we don't get into controlling of the advertising in the newspaper or online or anything like that. Okay. So I, I think if there was a non storefront, non retail delivery, I our code will allow at least a sign on that building location. Yeah. Thank you. Heidi. I just wanted to say when we were talking about perhaps a minimum, whether um, we uh, clarify it as a floor, I just want to say this is uh, the minimum to cover costs. I think we just have to be sure we're covering our costs. Okay, thank you. Russ? I was going to suggest that um, we change the verbiage on uh, the non-storefront delivery model to, does the group support a non-storefront business based um, delivery business based in Hermosa Beach? Mm. I think that'll save us a half hour when we, when yes. we uh, present it to um, 
to uh, council. And okay. then I also wanted to, to also say, um, we might wanna ask ourselves some more questions. Um, advertising restriction is one, um, you know, funding for the schools, funding for the police department, you know, get those things that, that we've heard have worked well in other places um, and uh, that I think most of us agree on, um, you know, as part of this uh, recommendation. Okay, and on, thank you. And on the clarification on the non-storefront, so does the group support a non-storefront delivery based in Hermosa Beach? Uh, if, uh, the other, I wanted to ask City Attorney Langer, um, when there could be deliveries from other cities that Hermosa Beach could capture um, its taxes on if there was a tax that was passed. It doesn't have to be, my understanding is it does not have to, the delivery business does not have to be in Hermosa Beach. I think San Francisco might be an example um, for what they had uh, done in that area, how they carefully sort of crafted their well, that's what I was going to say. I think it depends how the tax ordinance is drafted, whether it is uh, intended to cover businesses that have their physical location in another city, but the transaction mm -hmm. takes place in your city. And that's really what happens is, is the, the transaction is taking place uh, in your city. Um, so I think it depends how the tax ordinance is drafted. I think it's, it is a little bit difficult to enforce. Because how are you really going to know um, which businesses are delivering into your city and how many of those transactions are taking place? And um, I think even with the best of intentions, it can be a hard thing to capture, which is different when you have a business operating physically within the boundaries of your city um, and they have to submit their, you know, their tax uh, documentation to the city every year. It's a little bit easier to track. Um, so it's, it's a harder thing to enforce. But Again, I mean, it goes to how the tax ordinance is drafted and how far you want to try and capture. And, and similar to, I guess this will go to how cities define what doing business in the city means. So we have examples from Amazon and other online deliveries and, you know, where cities have, have fought to capture their share of taxes within, depending on where the transaction takes place. So I, I think um, there are examples that this city could look to if, whether the recommendation is from the advisory group or it's something that the council considers uh, if, if there is a lift, uh, lifting of the ban on delivery, uh, how to capture that tax. So I think we'll need to look at that too. And then one yeah, one other tool that I can think of is some cities require outside businesses to register or get mm -hmm. some type of, not a significant regulatory license, but some sort of license in order to deliver into the city, at least so you can keep track of who's coming in and have, have a little bit of sense of what businesses are, are bringing the deliveries into your city. So that's another uh, tool that we could consider at least to... Um, have, have some idea of what businesses are delivering in. Okay, thank you, thank you. So then going back to this last question we we're talking about, does the group support a non-storefront delivery based in Hermosa Beach? Is everyone happy with how they've been noted? Their response noted there? Okay, should Hermosa Beach lift the ban on cannabis storefronts? operations, I guess. Matt? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Jason? We'll come back to Jason. No. Oh, okay. That was Tom. Dave. Oh, that was Tom, okay. Dave? So does, and I see that you, there are some hands up too. So I'm sorry about that. Go ahead, yeah, Dave. It's okay. Um, I'm a little bit confused here. So I would support the lifting of the ban if Hermosa crafts its own initiative. 
I would not support the ban if uh, we're talking about the current initiative that's made the ballot. Got it. I see. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to answer this. Yeah. Okay. I think we already answered the initiative question. We do question. address that up above. Yeah. We do address that up above unanimously that no one supports that. Right. So, but I don't. I don't approve lifting the ban. Period. So I approve. I approve. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would approve. I would support uh, the council creating its own competing initiative. So, so, yeah. so the way this is, and written, that's and that's the next one. Yeah. So the way this is written, I would say no, because that that sounds like just lifting the ban and letting it go wild west. And with I'm the not, competing initiative. And so the next yeah. question gets to your your piece actually. Oh, yeah, but, well, but now you she just she just yeah, adjusted you, it. You can't. Yeah, you should, uh, you should control Z, control Z. That's not the right change of the wording. I think Dave yeah. just suggested he was voting no, which yeah. makes sense and is totally consistent. And I think we understand the rationale. And then the next question is, should the city council create a comp competing initiative? And I think that's where Dave is suggesting he would support it. I don't mean to put words into your mouth, but I'm trying okay. to help us. And Keep let's going, take man. that Keep out. <laughs> Hold on, and let's take that out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so my, my vote on this is no, and you can go straight down and put my vote is yes on the next one. Okay. Jason, are you back? Yeah, I am. Sorry. I, no. Okay. The next question, should the city council create a competing initiative? Matt? Yes. Yes. Nathan? Yes. Heidi? No. Tammy? Yes. Andrea? Oh, this is tortured question. Yes. Jason? No. And Tom. Tom. No. Okay. And looking at the next question, in the event city council desires a competing initiative, should the competing initiative include a taxation component? Everyone was yes on that. Let us know if you feel differently. Follow up there. Uh, next question, I mean, in the event there is no competing initiative, should there be a standalone measure, tax measure? And that was a yes by, by everyone. And what should the city's cannabis tax or tax range be? So we might need to split that up into two because some of you support a range and, um, and maybe all of you don't support a range. Did we split that up into two questions? And then I'd actually, is that even in the scope oh, of, of what we're doing? Is that what? I, I'd question whether that's even in the scope of, of what we're doing. And, and speaking for myself, I don't feel qualified to even, you know, weigh in other than to say it should be flexible and revisited frequently based on new information. Could, could we agree that we at least wanted to cover the cost? Yes. Yeah. Everybody agree. That's, okay. And that's the consensus we have heard from folks uh, over the last few meetings. So we could just leave it at that. Should should a cannabis tax cover at the very cover costs at least? Um, I want it to cover costs, and I want it to be as as flexible as possible to go up or down with market conditions, and just let the market prevail. But at the very least, this shouldn't cost the community money. That's kind of where I sit. Um, Dave, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, I, I think that the uh, I call it the, the I think it's a, a tricky. I think we're playing defense. That's what I feel like. Um, and the the challenge is uh, if we if we if the city does not propose something. Uh, it's very likely we get stuck with something much, much worse mm -hmm. and without tech, without uh, adequate taxation to cover costs uh, as the current uh, initiative yeah. that will be on the ballot um, you know, stands. It, it, it doesn't do anything for the city. Um, but I also wanted to very quickly address Cammy's comments about Fiesta since I do uh, sit on the board of the 
the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have a selection committee, so it's very unlikely something like that would would make it past that to be on, uh, you know, to be displayed at Fiesta. Um, but I, I also, to Ken's comments about signage, um, you know, we do have we did have a few uh, marijuana companies with um, tents or uh, uh, umbrellas during on dining decks. So I would like some clarification on that. Uh, you know, it, they were they were up and they were up for quite some time, uh, advertising delivery uh, marijuana or cannabis. So, you know, is that prohibited within Hermosa? And and what rights do those businesses have within Hermosa? Sorry for derailing. No, no, so well, and I just want to say real quick to Dave's, I I picked the. Um, Fiesta Hermosa, because I think that's where you're going to get the most attention. But we have something every weekend, especially in the summer. So volleyball. So I picked the Fiesta because it's the largest. But I guess I I'm applying it to all the other uh, events that we have at the beach. No, I, I get it, Cami. Okay. I just well, I just wanted to, you know, <laughs> speak for sure for uh, the change. Yes, I'm glad you did. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ken, if you can come back on, we did have, when, when the dining deck program started, we had umbrellas that had advertisements. We had some, some one, at least one deck had advertisement on the side of its deck. Uh, we did discuss it. We discussed uh, having standards. Um, do you want to just address that, whether we allow that or not? Um, yeah, we typically do not allow it. Um, there was a lot of exceptions made um, to help out the business community during the pandemic. And so there's no way we could be selective, let's say. And, you know, a lot of uh, businesses were getting their umbrellas and paid for by whatever it might be a beer company, um, a soda company, or if it happened to be a cannabis delivery company, we didn't se selectively enforce anything. We just relaxed enforcement generally. Right, and I think if council were asked that question, they may they may feel that it's not in the spirit of the sign the sign ordinance uh, and at, or outdoor advertising. Um, so that definitely would have to be. Yeah, that's something when we when a lot of these emergency measures start expiring, we'll have to revisit. Uh, but if we go to truly enforcing. Um, every aspect of the sign code, which is always a challenge. Um, we wouldn't allow any of that signing on any of the umbrellas or canopies or what have you, unless it's just the sign for the business on the premises and it's consistent with the sign code. Yeah. Okay, all right, um, let's see. So uh, we don't have, oh there, Heidi. So I have a, a real issue with the, the canopies because we do have one, I think it's, um, well, it's right at Gould and it's at a bar and there's a cannabis delivery sign right above where people sit out and drink. And as you all know, when you mix a little bit of uh, marijuana with a little bit of beer, you're way more impaired than either one alone. And I do hope that um, the city... <coughs> taking these uh, canopies down because in the couple of places where I've seen them, they both have been at alcohol, at bars. Um, and so I think that's really harmful to the community and normalizing it within the community right there at the beach. And also our state fair. I mean, this is what happens when you normalize a product in a community. Our California state fair is has this big cannabis section and they have an award this year for the highest potency THC green product. And there was a whole group of us that went to the board meeting last week to say, take that off. The higher the potency, the more dangerous it is. And so I really think that when we say, oh, this will never happen here, it can happen here if we normalize this product in our community. Yeah, and I'm, 
Glad you all raised the canopy piece. Um, we did see it quite a bit at the start, and I think there is one or more that's still up. So we will have a word with them, and um, it, it doesn't really it it doesn't follow the spirit or intent of what our city's ordinances are currently. So we'll follow up on that, Matt. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna point out the double standard here and it's glaring. Cannabis is legal in the state of California. And I see that that canopy too. And I think it's it's not right. I do believe that we should control that. But I've been looking at Bud Light volleyball nets since I moved to Hermosa Beach, all up and down the beach. And I see CBVA tournaments. I see kids in junior high and high school playing at Bud Light tournament nets and people, they're getting their pictures taken for colleges. They're getting, you know, everybody's exposed to that, but I don't hear any outcry to that. And quite frankly, the state has deemed this legal as has alcohol. So I just don't understand the double standard here. When, why, where's the outcry for the, for the Bud Light nets and these, and the negative impact this has on children? I'll agree with you. I just want to point that out. I'll I, agree with okay, you. And I just want to point that out. I will agree, and that's exactly why now you got to see that you've got to be offensive on this instead of like just letting it go. Well, everybody drinks because that's exactly what agreed, happened. Agreed. Bill said, but, "Let everybody." Yeah. Oh well, it's not that bad. Oh well, let's have it here. Oh, let's have it there. So now we have a on, chance to it, not have it. But it's been going on. It. I agree with that. I agree, Cami, and but it's been going on for years and. The only thing Bud Light ever did, as far as I understand, is they gave free nets. And that's how they got on the, that's how they got on the nets in Hermosa Beach. And then my second thing was um, my response to the city tax thing should at least cover costs. That is not at all what I meant. I meant at least cover costs. We need to be a benefit. This needs to be a benefit to the community. And at the very least, it can't be a hindrance on the community. But I do not believe that this should just cover costs. I mean, the current initiative is garbage because, in my opinion, because it doesn't do anything to benefit the community. And so my that that phrase there for me should at least cover cost is only half the story. This needs to be a benefit to the community, but it needs to be competitive and needs to be able to succeed so that it's a benefit. That's, I guess, what I was trying to make. So thanks hey, for Matt, Matt, I appreciate that as somebody who makes beer, sells beer for a living. I, I completely agree with you. It's the promotion of of it to minors is is uh, something we need to change. It's going to be a long road though. There's a lot of money in it. Yeah. Andrea, appreciate that. Um, I'd like at the at the risk of killing me, um, <laughs> I'd like to suggest that we change the wording on what should the city cannabis tax be. Could we say should the city pass an, uh, a tax or whatever the right terminology would be for that, that would be a flexible tax range. So we don't have, you know, it's, should we have a tax or should it be a range? Can we just make it be that should, should the city have a cannabis tax range with a maximum amount? Make that be the question, then we can say yes or no, and it makes it more straightforward. Because I think we all agree that the city should make the tax fit the current situation. You can do that, definitely. Um, should the city's uh, should the city's cannabis should the city have a cannabis tax range? Flexible tax range. Flexible tax range. Thank you. So exciting to get what I want, <laughs> and. I have one more request. Yes. Um, I've had a little minute to think things over and I would like to change my answer about competing initiative to no. Uh, yes, where are you? Okay. So three questions above and let's change to a no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And the, oh, sorry. 
No, no, you're on a roll. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, oh, we can take out that flexible thing in there, but we're gonna get to the to the voting next. So shut up, Andrea. No, that's all right. Um, Cami. Oops, you're on mute. Hold on, you're on mute. That was old. Okay, perfect. Shall we go ahead and uh, poll everyone? Should the city have a flexible cannabis tax range? Matt. Yes. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Nathan. Y yes. Heidi. Yes. 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 Jason. Tom? Yes. And Dave? Yes. Can I get okay. that? Should the city council adopt a new cannabis ordinance prior to the November election to allow cannabis delivery and or retail or other? So this would be outside of the ballot process. Yeah, it would. So similar to how they adopt other ordinances, this would be in advance of. Andrea? So as I recall, um, our discussion from last week, they could do that, but if the initiative passes, then that would supersede the legislation that the city or the ordinance that the city would pass. So I'm not sure that's the right move. If they're gonna write something, I think it has to be another initiative. Correct. So your initial question, you're right, and it goes back possibly to the strategy question that Tom has raised a couple times, which, a few times, uh, which is, would that be a good strategic move? Russ? Uh, my understanding is if we don't um, have an, a competing ordinance on the ballot in November, not only will that the ship sail, but if the tracker initiative passes, there will be no ability for council to put another ordinance on the ballot. Um, it can only be overturned by another um, another citizens led uh, ordinance. Uh, I guess my question is for Lauren on that. Is she still here? She is. Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> yeah. I I don't think that's accurate. I think what matters is if the voters approve an ordinance, only the voters can change it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think that means that the council could never put something before the voters to change it in the future. Um, but I the council can't do it. Language. The, normal, the normal practice. I'll have to go back and read it, but I thought there was specific language prohibiting the city from really doing anything. And, um, and Mike had said in, on our first call that that's very typical of, of ballot initiatives um, so that they can't just be thrown out by local government. Right. So the initiative itself, right. very few things for the city to do such as cultivation. I think, Lauren, I think um, Russ's question, and I think you answered it, but just to be clear, Russ is asking if there is no competing measure and if the Chakra initiative passed, the only way for the city to do anything after that is to place another measure before the residents, the voters, which would have to be a, the next general election. So Three years. Correct. So there's a delay in time, but it doesn't have to come from initiative from residents getting enough signatures to get it on the ballot. I think the council can always put a measure on the ballot at a later date. But it can only the the terms that the initiative sort of freeze in time can only be changed later by the voters. The city council can't do it at the city council level. And to be clear, this question, as posed here, isn't about the actual November ballot. It does say that, which I could see adding to confusion. This is about should city council adopt an ordinance prior to we already answered the question i think of should the city council have a competing ordinance i think i guess like if we wanted to to be pedantic on the november ballot is the way to to, to close that loop but i think we already addressed that i think this was a, a much more narrow question than that yeah this this is just 
I don't think the question was asked earlier, was it should the city council adopt a cannabis ordinance by adopt it by ordinance? Was that up there earlier? No. Okay. Okay. So we can definitely take out the rest of the question uh, or the reference to the election. Just prior to, yeah, to the mayor. Okay. Does that look better? How is that different than the competing initiative question, I guess? The competing initiative would be on the ballot. On the ballot it's the vote uh, versus yeah. okay, a got city it. ordinance. Got it. Yeah. So, but the, why are we taking a, why are we taking the before November? Because that's kind of the point is, I think that the thinking when we first started was if the city passes an ordinance now, then that would be good because, mm -hmm. well, we don't have to have that initiative because we've already got our own. Mm -hmm. And the caveat then became, if God forbid that initiative would pass, it would supersede the um, the ordinance that was written. I, th I think if I could take a shot at that, Andrea, um, I think part of the strategic rationale is that if the city were to adopt its own ordinance, not that's that's prior to whatever makes it onto the ballot, potentially that could change the voter calculation. We wouldn't need f folks wouldn't feel compelled to vote yes on the initiative that we unanimously oppose in the event of the city taking proactive measures. And I think that's a little different than should the city also put a competing initiative on the ballot with the initiative that we oppose. And that also would, you know, is kind of a separate question. And so, so is, then, is, is that right? Does that sound sound, sound accurate, Suja? And, and is that is that I where think, we're at with I this? I think Andrea's question is by strategically by the very nature of what an ordinance would stand to achieve, wouldn't that be before November anyway? Right. So, I mean, yeah, they can do an ordinance anytime they want, but strategically we need it to be before November. So I would prefer to have that in the language in of the question. But am I to understand that if they do put adopt a new cannabis ordinance before November or not, that the Shacker initiative still supersedes it? If it, if it, if it passes. Yeah, which to me means that, I mean, the whole point to doing this is a blocking maneuver. Am I correct? Right. It can and be. I, but if I guess that makes it even more puzzling why only because you, you suggested a, a, no, a no vote on it, which would kind of make that um, yeah, irrelevant. I, I was going to say, but, I think it came up because we thought, well, if it was in, then all the people that signed the initiative and then realized like, oh, well, I didn't really realize it meant that, but, uh, but I still want cannabis here. I think we thought, would that help? They would, then they'd vote no on the initiative. Mm -hmm. Because you could say, well, we have whatever they decide. Well, we have delivery coming in legally. And so then all the people that were like, oh, well, that's all I wanted to have happen. They'd vote no on the initiative. I'm not saying this is correct. I'm just clarifying when we had the discussion. I see your point. That was, I think you're totally right. They'd vote think... no on the initiative. So we wouldn't have to. to like, no, because now I people would feel point. that we've done something to you know, get medicinal marijuana in, whatever they decide the ordinance is. I see your point on that and it makes sense intuitively, but it but the I do it does take the power away from the voters. And this is a voter decision to me. And yes. so yes, by yes, city does. council putting it in there, you know, I mean to to me, I believe you leave it in the hands of, but I do see your point and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let me um, go to Lauren. Lauren, you had your hand up a couple times. The point I was going to make was was stated that it's not just yes, it would be superseded by if the initiative passed, but it just changes the discussion of whether or not voters want the initiative or want the council's ordinance. But I think that was stated. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Okay. So uh, Heidi. I, I agree with Matt. I think this is a voter decision. I think people would be up in arms if um, they didn't have the opportunity to weigh in on this. 
and you know and like matt and other people that i disagree with their decision if this is the voter decision that's what it is you know so i just want to add to that though but you are also opposing a competing initiative so it's either vote for garbage or don't vote at all and so there that you know that's a double edged sword we, and, and obviously there everybody. there was no initial there was no initial vote to impose the ban in Hermosa in the first place it was an act of a city ordinance there's all sorts of inconsistencies yeah. there but it's not yeah it's not. i'm sorry I, I i missed that nathan you are correct my my fault and so i mean you you got to pick a side here and i and think it's I either we put it in the hands of the voters and we trust the voters or not well the voters didn't say anything years ago so yeah but that's not come on and so I've, been to, I've, I've been to plenty of meetings and the voters had a lot to say and we went till two or three in the morning. I can tell you I was a tired girl when I got home and we formed committees and we organized and we said no and got whatever it was we didn't want out of town. So um, people, people will come and say if they feel strongly about it. And just I don't know everyone sees this but or knows this, but just to be clear, whether the committee, the group disagrees with the tracker initiative or not, voters will have the opportunity to vote yes or no on that. So it still is a voter. And I think that's what I heard from Heidi is um, they could vote no on that. Um, that's something that the group hasn't spent a lot of time discussing it, but they're Outside of the group, outside of council, you may have residential groups, as Andrea is talking about, organize to call for a no vote on that. So that is also a possibility um, among the range of possibilities that, that exist. Dave. I, I would also just like to point out that the it didn't go to a vote for the, for the city of Hermosa to ban shops. Mm -hmm. That was a decision made by the city. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, the people who would prefer that there would be a shop have sat by, you know, and waited for the for their chance to vote. So, anyway, just a point. Thank you, Russ. And just just a reminder that the reason that the that most cities in California put those bands together was they didn't want there to be a wild west. Mm -hmm. Uh, with everybody opening things, so uh, I, I think it's disingenuous to say the the voters have spoken uh, when that all happens. I agree, but it's I a agree. wild west now, and so it's not the wild west. That, that's why we have regulation now. Yeah, wild west is no regulation. We're crafting regulation. It's not the wild west. Then how come? How come it says the black market has taken over California and that we're a cautionary tale about how not to legalize? We've gone over this to over a lot over of over. our tax structure is wrong. I mean, we've gone over this. Yeah. And Heidi, the fact that they haven't found the the perfect management structure yet doesn't mean we should give up trying to manage it. And to uh, me, I, I think we can all agree that that a lot of what comes out of Sacramento is absurd and doesn't make sense. And I, I would suspect that those of, of uh, us who work for the city would say that most of all. Um, but the idea that government should stop trying to find the solutions that work and, and mitigate the, the problems while maximizing um, the upside of things, that just, that doesn't make sense to me at all. So to me- There's other states this is thriving. Yeah, there, there are places that are figuring it out. This, the, the world went through this with, with alcohol, the world went through this with motor cars, with air travel, with the internet, um, with copyright, like literally everything goes through this process and we're very early. So what yes, I said- and cigarettes and vaping, I, I mean, that's a problem when you, yeah. you, you jump in too early though. That's yeah, right. And, and we got it wrong with cigarettes, clearly. Uh, exactly, so my- thought is let's let the black market and the and the legal market figure out their problems before they come into Hermosa Beach. <laughs> That's what it's I said. The black market's already the here and the we legal are. market's already The black here. market is here. That's the only way yeah. you can buy it in Hermosa. That's right. Market. So let's not make it any worse. Let's stay out of it. So we have one more question. And let's see, should the city council adopt a new cannabis ordinance prior to November? 
to allow cannabis delivery and or retail. Matt? No. No. Russ? Uh, no. Nathan? No. No. Heidi? Heidi? Okay. Ken. No. Andrea was a no. And Jason? No. Tom? No. Dave? No. I would like to suggest one more question. And, Holy cow. And it would be, uh, do you, do you, would you support repealing legalized cannabis? It's not on the, but that's not in our purview. I know, yeah. but it, but it. <laughs> At what end? Uh, and we couldn't do. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it, it's okay. We, we don't have to put that in there, but it, you know, it's it's. There's no way we would ever get a quorum. There would. There's no way we would ever get a, anything. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a majority. Well, maybe a majority, but uh, because there are there are people who absolutely um, are on, on you know the far extremes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know we would have a deadlock jury. You know. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So Dave, yeah. I have a question on that though, and yeah. I mean this is an honest question. If we were to ask the same question about alcohol, it's addressed by the state the same way, is it not? Sorry, I'm not sure I quite understand. So you're asking if we were to is the question if we were to eliminate cannabis altogether. In, like that's the quorum you're looking for. Well, I, I I don't know. I mean, I just think the context is really important of where people are coming from, uh, because oh, because the the these questions are, you know, are th thoughtful questions, and we're trying to craft, you know, give some advice to the city council. But if there was nothing in any of these discussions that would ever sway you, because your position is extreme on one I see your point. Yeah. And I see your point. I see your point. I see your point. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I should have down there. I didn't mean and, and we don't have to I'm not asking to add that. I'm just trying to make a you know sort of a a statement about, you know, there's a very this is a very diverse crowd in terms of their stances and their opinions and and um, there's some that would never be swayed by any discussions that we had. Agree. There are certain people on this panel that no matter what will not go one way or another and that's not the that was not the spirit of this committee. Agreed. I, I'm going to disagree with that because I think it was good to hear everybody's side. The point is we're supposed to be helping the council, all the people that are listening in. This is a public meeting. If it was just a committee and us mm -hmm. talking, that's one thing. But being a something that everybody can hear, you get to say mm -hmm. your side. I, I We get to hear initiatives. Mm -hmm. We get to hear from a doctor. I, I disagree of people maybe having a set opinion in one direction or the other. The whole point was to get this out there and to hear what, what are the competing sides? What is the trickiness of this issue for the council to see? Like, so that they can go, oh, well, maybe I didn't realize about this health thing. Oh, I didn't realize how much money we can make or not. Oh, I didn't realize what the police department wanted. So why would you have everybody that in the middle willy-nilly? Willy why would you, the whole point is, is to hear all these different opinions. And that sounds I'm great, sorry. but we've had, we've had professionals and good data on here that have been completely dismissed. And, it, and it, I mean, the best data came from law enforcement and from the industry. And, and conversation immediately went the other way and said, oh, not to be credible. And I'm sorry, that's credible data. You can't look at it that way. The question was, does cannabis fit in our community? And I've listened to six meetings of diatribe against cannabis being the worst thing on earth. That's not the question. The question is, does cannabis fit in Hermosa Beach? Not whether it should be legal or not. But people on this committee have tried to sway that as this is the worst thing on earth. So no, I'm sorry. I disagree entirely with your fact that can, with, you the, know, with your well, then the, that, So then you're going extremely the other way though, that I don't need to hear the other side let me at interject, all. Let me interject briefly. I'm um, listening to both sides. And I think that's 
I think, and I think terms. everybody is listening to both sides. So, so for 100%. you to suggest that we didn't Great. listen to <laughs> because one person's extreme one way or the other that we didn't all listen, I, I totally disagree with that. And so, because of that, that's why these the, the questions started from a premise that it is legal. Prop, Prop sixty four passed, and that's why we didn't ask that qualifying question. And I think. Um, I think everyone who's spoken is correct. Uh, where someone is coming from is clear through comments, but, and as awkwardly as some of the questions were phrased, we from the city staff side certainly want to, to be sure that we, the starting point was, we're not asking whether it should be legalized or not. That question's been answered. So let's go through these. And so, um, and, and it was important to hear everyone's opinion. I, Appreciate that. That's why we asked during the vetting process where you were um, on retail operations in, in the city. And so we tried to come up with a balance there. And I appreciate everyone's patience with one another. Tom. Yeah, I think I think we're close and we're like 10 minutes away. And so we if, are close. If we could go back, if we could go back for just a second and on to the chart table, uh, table? Yeah, to, the, to the chart and, and and then I think it would be important to to go through that list as well but and maybe people have additional points to be made but in, unless people are going to change their their votes this this speaks to me pretty clearly that that we're unanimous that we that we don't like the current initiative we're unanimous that um the lack of a retail storefront does not cause hardship. Uh, um, so we're a uh, very narrow majority thinks the current uh, cannabis ban on both should stay, uh, but then a narrow majority says it should be lifted for delivery. And so if I was looking at this, I, I would say just a literal interpretation of this is that this this group thinks that there should be um, a competing initiative related to delivery, mm -hmm. and um, very narrowly. But but that's where this group landed. Uh, they don't think there should be an ordinance. They think that the people should have an opportunity to vote. They think there should be a competing initiative uh, narrowly, and they they think that um, that should be confined to uh, delivery. Uh, is is, is w what this says literally. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't want to jump in front of here, but if you just add one more column, if you add one more column and give the count on it, that might help. And then it, yeah. it paints a very clear picture. Right. But I mean, that's what this says. That. Yeah, I mean, that's what this says. Agreed. Now, is that, a, is that a consensus? You know, I don't know. Um, no. it, it, it's, it's, well... Consensus doesn't mean that everybody agrees. It means can you live with it? Um, right. And so I don't know that we're ever going to come to a consensus, but basically what we've said here, I just want to make sure everybody's clear, is, is that we don't support the current initiative. Um, we think that there should be a competing one, and uh, we think it should be confined to delivery. Now, I don't, you know, obviously I don't agree with all those components, but that, but we agreed at the beginning that it was going to be a majority vote, uh, and so we we said that it wasn't going to be a consensus. So if you just take a literal majority vote, that's what we're saying. Right. And and I mean that's how staff is going to represent this to the council, would be my guess. And and so I just state that kind of as a fact, and then let's move on to since a majority of us think there should be a competing initiative related to delivery, um, should it? Should we make sure that it addresses those uh, issues that are on the next slide? Mm -hmm. And we'll add a column to summarize as, as um, you were saying and, and Matt recommending, Jason. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I, I think that we should be proud as a committee because I think that we found I mean, like some pretty clear spaces here to, you know, to advise the city council, which is our, our role, right? Like that this is really just directed for city council to do what they want to do with it. So I I, I think that uh, my understanding is that the, they would be also be provided with this document so they can see the context of that. 
probably my only recommendation just in regard to some of the issues that I think Matt brought up is that it may be important for in this document for our roles to be identified. They were mm -hmm. identified in the meeting. Um, and I just want to make note too that Dave in the meeting said that he doesn't represent the Chamber of Commerce, but then he's labeled in this meeting as representing the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. So it's just, I think that that should be really made clear to the city as well, city council as well also, because I do agree with Matt that, I mean, like various roles within this shapes our perspective. And that's a community. I mean, like ultimately, like that's that that's what a community is made of, different roles within it. So I think that's okay. And, I, and I'm not surprised there's disagreement. Um, so yeah, thank you. And well said, Tom. Oh, and I forgot the most important part. We all agree that it should be taxed. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, and so yeah. we're, we're all saying there should be a standalone tax if, if there's not a competing initiative. So I, anyways, I, I think we're, if you just literally take what we've said here, um, there's, there's the formation of a recommendation. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do the summary. Um, just wanted, I know can't, Heidi, you have your hand up. I wanted to just mention that um, the remaining task, if you wanted to, is to look at the restrictions that were previously mentioned. I think Tom had recommended some, and we've added some from other conversations. If you wanted to add any others that you saw from the laundry list that came from uh, Port Wyneme's CUP. You can do that. Cam, um, Heidi, sorry, I'm taking my glasses off. Um, so I, I do think it's a good idea to put down uh, people's roles and, and professions. And this is something that um, I had concerns about from the very beginning is there's no financial windfall for me if my way goes, but there could be if somebody's in the cannabis industry um, you know, so, so Matt, you're in the industry, correct? I mean, so how would your- I haven't been in the industry. I haven't been in the industry for four years almost. So no, and never in California. Doesn't mean I won't be, but no, you're actually not correct on that. But okay, but it's, it does bring up, you know, do you have investments there? Does anybody have- uh, a Let me, Heidi, let me interrupt. It's you. irrelevant. Let it, me, it's actually irrelevant. I don't think- Heidi, let me interrupt you. You're, you I you made said you're an advocate. Hold on, let me address you're, this. I made the selection of committee members based on full knowledge of where they're coming from. Everyone I'm assuming was truthful and I, I absolutely believe that. Um, let's not at the last meeting call into question the validity of one another's opinions. I think that is not justice served to anybody or the group or the city or city staff that's also here with you hours on end. So let's let's not do that. Okay, sorry, I, I felt like I had to, I felt like I was having to defend myself as well. No, so, no. And, and right. I thought that the officer did give good data uh, last week, but then we had to decide, is, it, is that what we want for Hermosa Beach? I don't think people dismissed his data. I think people said, does that work for us? So okay. it was clearly let's um, see, Nathan. Any so first, Tom, Dr. Johnson, I, I love the summaries. I think they very, very accurately represent sort of my reflection on sort of where we got to in terms of the recommendations today. Um, the only thing I would add to this particular list about possible regulations, and I don't think it's something we have the scope to get into, is just because there is a narrow majority support for recon reconsidering the rules about delivery, uh, there's probably should some some reference to subsequent reviews. Uh, you mentioned San Francisco. I'm sure there's other jurisdictions and other places we can the, the city can look to for more information about delivery. I think a lot of the storefront specific recommendations don't seem to be as relevant, particularly given the majority of the group that has opted. Uh, you know that that the, the majority decision um, that uh, we're not particularly interested in removing the lifts and there isn't significant harm. For for a storefront location. So there's just a disconnect for me and us investing a lot of time in recommendations about a storefront when our recommendation is no storefront, we should probably prioritize things like advertising, the signage, uh, and then, you know, reasonable regulations about licensing for a delivery operation and that sort of thing. Absolutely. So then that would include uh, 
prohibition of billboards for advertising. So continuing the council's uh, or the city's current prohibition on those things. Um, are there other items? So advertising, oh, Tom. Tom and Russ and Dave have their hands up. Tom. Yeah, it's similar to what Nathan was saying. I, I, I think that we should have in here limit on, on the number. Um, so if, if we are, if, if, this, if the majority of this group is leaning towards uh, delivery only, that there should be a limit on the number of delivery businesses in town. And so I would say one. Well, the, the, the... I, would say, I would say one, of course, but, but so as far as licensed delivery in town. I think the I think the problem no, yeah. with with no license delivery in town if if on the previous screen right no yeah I yeah and I think the problem was that it's it's about resolving operators from outside of Hermosa I think yeah. the majority actually voted that delivery businesses based in Hermosa might not be something we would want to permit so I I think this is about regulation from just incoming delivery, since we yeah. see that as inevitable. Which, which well, we said we, we basically can't regulate. So the previous, so the, there was a slim majority to take off the ban on delivery, right? Did I right. read that right? Yep. But then the cannabis storefront, the, the uh, non-storefront delivery, um, which is the next question down, uh, that there was a slim, a majority in not lifting the ban for that. Okay. So the 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 what what Cami articulated was she didn't want a warehouse full of pot anywhere in Hermosa Beach. She was fine with with the cars coming in from elsewhere, but wouldn't want them uh, wouldn't want the delivery hub to be here. Which is honestly something I'm on the fence on personally too. I understand. All right. Well, so then you wouldn't limit the number, but don't you want right. to? But then don't you want to then regulate but what the, the, deliver what delivery folks can and can't do? Like like maybe they, yeah, need, like maybe I, they I think, need to like maybe they need to be clearly identified. And, and well, better. actually, what the, what the chief told us was the that, opposite. Yeah, it's better that they're not because then mm -hmm. they become targets, targets for carjacking. And then the other thing he said was the only way to effectively police that is through very time consuming and expensive undercover operations that would take away from things that are far more harmful. Uh, and that unless he was specifically directed to do that for some reason, uh, it wasn't gonna be at the top of the priority list. I think in three minutes, we're not gonna figure out no. the, right. the golden yeah. rule recommendations on a delivery nope. model. But I think Tom, your point that some consideration for licensing or regulation or oversight should be part of our recommendation and maybe just that city council study it or consider it or look to some other cities as a model. Yeah. Okay. Um, Russ? So um, the 1500 minimum distance, um, I would need to see a map to really make, make sense of that. But if memory serves, the chakra ordinance puts a thousand foot minimum distance. And with that, it only, you know, if, if we were to go from that, it only allows um, a location at the, the north and south end of PCH. So if it was 1500 feet, that might result in a effective ban, which is the type of thing we could get sued over uh, based on a previous call. Um, I would say instead of prohibit, prohibition of billboards for advertising, change that to outdoor advertising. Um, so that covers tents, that covers benches, that covers um, booths, whatever that needs to be. Uh, just because bill, you know, billboards aren't the issue that, that's been um, articulated here. Um, and uh, funding for schools and ongoing education. Um, we, we, had, uh, we had a presentation about how uh, there seemed to be correlation between the amount of education that was happening uh, and uh, use and use declining among the student body, and that would just seem to be something we'd want to focus on. Dave, well, the list is so long. Um, there's you know number total number if there is if there are retail storefronts total number. I mean, 
if I'm correct, is the recommendation in Redondo is two? In all of Redondo? Yeah, no, that it was that it's was three. 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 That was, but, that was just to, to stick their toe in the water, wasn't it? They they were pilot pilot program. Yeah. The, ch the initiative from the Long Beach guys was three and Redondo Beach is working on a ordinance for two. Right, so right. So if we do a competing, you know, obviously- so I think in Redondo, the council recommendation was two to start. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like a pilot program would be the way to go uh, for, for certain. Um, and then a buffer between the, the the storefronts, if there are storefronts, uh, it sh should be there. They shouldn't be all bunched together. Um, and hours, do we have any, you know, hours of operation? Um, I think I, I'll just share with sure. the number of business operations that the council has um, to consider. You may be able to leave that to the council. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is the security and any kind of uh, connection to the police department. Police they, department. You, you know, the uh, the 24 hour uh, video surveillance that they share, I think that's key. Mm -hmm. Being able to see, see in and see what's going on at any time. Okay. Any other thoughts, Matt? Um, yeah, I would say we might want to defer to Ken on the distance requirements. And I think, I forget who said, uh, we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we, we've limited um, a business from opening. Um, I think as far as, um, I, I do think we need competition. I, I would not want to see just one of anything uh, where it's a single group in there. Um, because I do think that you want to see, you want the ability to see who's doing it right or wrong. I think uh, if we listen to what Chief Selena said, um, he had said his big mistake was too many. And so one of my concerns with allowing deliveries in from other locations only is that you are at the you're really at the discretion of weed maps or, or some of the platforms as to whether or not they're going to police this. And how do you really know who's delivering or not? But if you have two, I call them brick and mortar, but they're brick and mortar delivery companies um, delivering, you know they're the only two that can deliver or four, whatever the number is, but let's call it two. Um, I think that you, you, you have a determinant amount of oversight that you need to do as opposed to chasing people down in other jurisdictions and trying to figure out who's coming in from where. Um, I think uh, the security speaks for itself. Um, you're gonna, these will be very secure locations. Um, I don't disagree with any of the other things, I, um, prohibition around the pier. Um, I'm just looking at anything else. And where the funding goes, that's a whole different discussion. But yeah, that's where I'm at on that. Oh, and I do think it's a, a point. Six, I was looking at our, our little chart. We agree unanimously on six points. That's that's something. So good job, guys. That is pretty remarkable. That's Tom. Six things just, we are mark step on. And just to I just to acknowledge we are running a little over, and I think we're very close. I do have some um some closing remarks I want to share with you as well. Tom? Yeah, real quick, the 1500, I believe, is what um, Redondo is currently considering. So that, that's where um, I can't, I, I believe. And Ken, um, Ken can let us know. We had done some. And did we ever test the 1500 and that did that end up meaning that? Would be permitted. Um, never tested 1500. Um, we tested what was in the initiative, which was the yeah, th thousand feet, and it's just schools, it's schools, parks, and youth centers. And so, I don't know if the 1500 on this list is just meant to cover schools, but I can't say that we've tested that. But that's easy enough to do with a, a GIS map mapping exercise. And we'll do that. And if it 
turns out to be a ban, of course, um, we'll let the council know. Two other quick points, just uh, with density and bullet too. I think we want some sort of regional, we talked about, you know, some sort of regional consideration because you have um, Redondo getting ready to do something. And I think that the title in parentheses should be changed to in the event city council desires. Right. A competing initiative related to storefronts. Yes, correct. I, I I would want to bring up just one question that I want to address on this list that we talked about was the requirement for a conditional use permit. So that would be for the competing initiative. Right. 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 And I think just in the discussion from from folks, um, it's clear that that is what I think the group is thinking of, but we should put that there, that um, the conditional use permit is helpful. Oh, that makes me think. Okay, and let's see, let's go to Cami. Um, no cultivating, manufacturing, or testing. Because I know that's on the um, current initiative that they can do that. I don't know if that's exact wording, but I think it is. And uh, people are allowed to do it at home, though. Mm -hmm. Just for personal yeah. use. Well, yeah, this is related to storefronts. I was all yeah, in. businesses. Businesses. And then um, I did like the fines or however um when Yumi did uh you know if there was a smell or there was trouble and they didn't fix it in in a day well they just whatever the trouble was with the conditional mm -hmm. use permit you had a time limit you had to fix correct what the remedy problem was or you couldn't um run because I do think some of these stores definitely I you know as we saw that one on aviation get away with they you know find them and they just you know somebody new just came in versus like actually making them fix their problems or that they go over on their hours so i don't want to just say it's not just based on kind of based on everything if they're not following the rules they got to be able to shut them down okay andrea i think you have to come back to me after cammy said that i kind of lost my thought <laughs> uh, russ um, no um, property requirement for applying. I, I remember when um, LA County did that. Um, they took so long to get the ordinance out. You had a bunch of people paying rent on buildings for businesses. They couldn't open. And uh, you got some very, very nasty lawsuits out of that. Mm -hmm. So no, uh, no property requirement to, um, or facility to apply. requirement to apply. Yeah. Okay, I remember now. Okay. So I would want it, the decision for licensing to be not based on, based on the most, what did they, let's see, what I'm trying to remember the right term to use here. <clears throat> In the initiative that is currently out there, they said we should decide on the criteria and it would be points that were applied by the city manager and i didn't like <clears throat> that imposition on on the city manager and also we had discussed that that could open up to lawsuits because they could say that it was a subjective um, assigning of points so i'm not sure what the correct wording would be that on how how the um, the selection of the applicants would be, and also not such a slim timeline. I believe it was only thirty days. Um, so yeah. So just a caution about the imposition on staff, and also is it a setup to challenge? Right. So that's. Um, so we can add that as a cautionary mention. Um, at the end of the day, there is a decision if if there is retail operations or if there is uh, delivery operations, there is 
somebody does have to review the applications and um, there will be that time and position. So that's just part of operations, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I didn't like it that they decided what you were gonna do with your time. You know, it's not, oh. their, not their business. Absolutely, and exactly how the, it seems pretty prescribed. So, Matt? Um, yeah, I would say on that, it, it, it is on what Andrew's talking about, merit-based, but with consideration for experience. And I do like to see maybe some points issued for local business owners, things like that. I just, I think that's a cool thing. And I think even Chair Salinas talked, or uh, Chief Salinas talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for see, cleaning up my words. <laughs> no worries. Uh, the uh, no cultivation, manufacturing, or testing in storefronts. I don't think there's any storefront part of that line. Because, I mean, to me, when I'm thinking about, re I think, Retail is a storefront, um, but I do want to point out that, and I, I do not disagree, no cultivation or manufacturing. Testing laboratories are small businesses. They do, um, they bring in tiny little samples and they destroy the samples and there is no smell. It's all done in fume hoods. It's all done with laboratory instruments and things like that. I see that as a potential revenue stream for Hermosa without any of the downside. You don't have any, no one will ever know what's going on inside that building. And also the samples that are in there are not usable. Most of them treat them when they pick them up. And so it's, I don't see a downside there. So for me, I think testing could be a nice benefit to the community without any of the downfalls. Okay, I mean, I'm happy to change that because you're more knowledgeable on that. That's a, fine. Okay. I can show you more on it, but it, it's just for your information. Thank you. Heidi? Well, I, I do think it's bad optics to have uh, drugs funding schools. I mean, that was one of the things about the presentation that really um, was, was really disturbing to me was to see the Boys and Girls Clubs <laughs> and other uh, uh, getting money from the marijuana industry. I think it normalizes it to them. And um, to go along with that, um, uh, I would like to get everybody's feeling for what do you feel about the kids menu? I mean, I think, you know, look, it's, it's legal for adults to use, but should Hermosa sell products that are marketed specifically to kids? I think this is something that we could step up to the plate and we could be leaders on this and say, no, nope, we're not. you're talking about the menu, are, are you talking about the menu in the store? Cannabis infused beverages, inhaled products that are flavored or, flavored or marketed using flavor en enhancing names, flavored joint blunt wrappers, other youth appealing products. Prohibited package labeling that is attractive to children or youth. Prohibited. So, if I Oops, you're breaking up a little bit, but I, I heard what you said. If I can share with you, um, and I'm sure all of you have followed uh, where the council has leaned on flavored tobacco and all of that. So I think that would be consistent. And um, I can't say what the council would do, of course, but uh, it would stand to reason that they would have, they would cascade that same thought over to anything else that might um, fall in that in that category. So it, you can ask for the question uh, directly to the group or um, trust that the council will be consistent in how they approached it with other items like tobacco and vaping. Um, so do we want to add that specifically to the list to say? What is, um, and then let me ask the group, what's the best way to articulate that where it is very isn't, much isn't, focused on kids? Isn't it already illegal at the state level? That kind it of is. marketing, is it? Yeah. I mean, but they do it anyway. You know, it's kind of like you can't smoke at the beach. It's still illegal. You're smoking at the beach. So it would be- It's like you can't get delivery in Hermosa, but we still do it. I maybe, maybe, a way, maybe a way to address it would be on bullet five. Uh, restriction on flavor products and combustibles and product marketed directly to kids. I had a mom who sent me a, a picture of a, a, 
Yeah, so I think that's a good suggestion, Tom. Um, adding that to five, what is the youth clarification in five? Yes, marketed directly to kids. This mom sent me a picture of a box of cookies that she found in her in her son's room, and it was like it was like 160 milligrams of THC in in the bag. I mean, and she was like, "What is this?" And he said, "Well, it's you know, it's no more addictive than cigarettes." And she's like, "Oh my gosh, you know." Okay, so I think I have captured everyone. So I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I do want to thank everyone for your participation. Um, we've spent a lot of time together and I can't thank you enough. I want to go ahead and just share with you at the beginning, we talked about what the group's goals were at the very first cannabis advisory group meeting. Some of the group members shared that your goals for the group or for your participation in the group. And so I wanted to just recap some of those goals and what actions we've taken associated with those goals, just to be sure I brought that full circle. I didn't want you to think I asked that for no reason. And so let me go back to it. The first goal that was articulated is establish clarity on the chakra initiative. And the action that we took was that our city attorney, city staff, and representatives from the cannabis industry provided, a representative, I should say, provided information regarding the elements of the proposed initiative and potential impacts. As a result of that discussion, the advisory group had expressed unanimous opposition to the CHACR initiative. The second goal that was identified is we wanted to discuss accessibility and acceptability. Um, and the action that was taken is that the advisory group, you, had a robust discussion regarding whether there is an access issue for the community members. You also discussed uh, that there is currently sufficient access either within proximity or through delivery, um, which while currently prohibited is difficult to regulate. Proximity to schools and pathways to schools were of concern to you that you articulated. The other goal that was articulated is to establish guidelines to protect the community. And as an advisory group, you work to deliver operational guidelines. We just uh, went through some of that right now toward the end as well. Parameters for the council group members, you stressed strong interest in establishing some strict guidelines to be implemented through an application or a CUP process. So thank you for mentioning the CUP, Ken, um, to wrap a bow on that. And then the last goal that you had articulated early on was um, have information and data-driven discussions. So over the course of six meetings, the group has heard from speakers with expertise and information regarding the cannabis industry, law enforcement and regulation, substance abuse and prevention, impacts on youth, city operations, and community character. Legal implications were discussed, taxation and financial impacts, and information on neighboring communities. We've also heard from many members of the public, either through written communication or at the meetings. This is not to say that in six meetings, six by three, sometimes a little over three hours, um, so say you spend a total of 20 hours together, that it was exhaustive. That's difficult to do, but I do want to um, share with you that you went through a lot uh, during these meetings. You heard a lot and you also shared a lot. Even when you disagreed, I think it was very important to hear what you all had to say. And so I hope that you feel that this process was as valuable as we do, as I do and we do, and that we've accomplished the goals that you had set out in the first part of the meeting and then some. And so I wanted to see if there were any final thoughts from you as group members and, um, and then wrap it up. Andrea? Well, I wanna thank you for your good support and leadership and keeping us on the straight and narrow when we tried to stray. Um, it's really important and sometimes hard to do as the, the leader of a meeting. And also, I wanted to ask you if your dress pattern was a little... Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. 
I just noticed no. two leaves that we were discussing. <laughs> no, this is so I'm from the tropical part of India. So this reminds me of my home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just could not resist. It really kind of looks more like poinsettias than it does to the other. So if you know what the cassava root is, um, uh -huh. tapioca, the leaf is this. That's why it reminds me of the tropical part of India. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's funny. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, you know, you told me at one point I, I could never be a party pooper and I just couldn't That's leave the, the meeting without a laugh. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Nathan? No, Andrea said everything. I just wanted to, since, since we're on the record, take take the time to to thank you for for successfully hurting the cats to something that seemed like a, a resolution we could get 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 behind so thank you nicely done and uh i appreciate you uh helping steer us through some some public service thank you thank you russ i just wanted to say thank you uh, i thought this was um really good and that uh, despite the radical differences in opinion, we we did, as Tom said before, uh, arrive at something resembling a consensus uh, against odds. And uh, I just want to say thanks for that. Uh, that was not easy. And uh, you did it great. Thank you. Matt. Uh, agreed, Suja and the, uh, and, you know, all the staff at Hermosa, thank you for everything you guys do every day. Thanks for everybody on the panel. Um, Everyone, Russ, I appreciate your input, um, and just everybody. I, I I do appreciate everybody's opinion, and and I respect it. Thank you. And thank you for participating with a four-hour time difference. Um, appreciate that, Cami. Uh, concurring, seconding, whatever. Thank you for corralling all of us, and I love that the group was uh very divergent on opinions and we kind of ran the spectrum that's democracy to me that you have all the different groups and then that you come together and not everybody necessarily gets their way all the time that's how you get things done is you hear this and this and you come and you hope you get somewhere that everybody i think here loves hermosa and does want the best for Hermosa, not just for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I I loved all the different opinions and I appreciate everybody's time and, and laying it all out there and saying what you think and and we love Hermosa. So I, I think our time has been well spent here and I appreciate everybody's time. Awesome, thank you, Tom. Alvin said, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody, staff and the committee members, and uh, thanks. Steve? Um, I, I also wanted to thank you, Suja, and the city staff for putting up with us and uh, our, our uh, many, many, many questions and sometimes repeated questions. And I, I really do, uh, I don't want anybody to think that I wanted to talk to a bunch of people who had the same opinions. It was great to hear wildly different opinions than, than mine. Um, and I thank Tom for always being the voice of reason. I work with Tom at, uh, at the chamber and uh, he always has that calm, steady voice, which, uh, you know, voice of reason, which I, I truly appreciated tonight. Thanks, Tom. Awesome, thank you. I also wanted to give a special thank you to Anne, who um, I think this added 10 additional hours to her week at minimum with the agendas and getting the speakers and the notes and everything. Um, she's quite amazing on just about everything, but uh, this just puts it over the top. This, somehow she's found more than 24 hours in a day and I'm still trying to figure how to do that. Heidi? I just wanna say we're all united against the ordinance and I hope that we will all um, speak against the ordinance to protect Hermosa Beach. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, stay, stay connected. We will type this up. The staff report will be out usually a few days before the council meeting. We do try to get it out as early as possible. And um, we'll send you a link to it. You can take a look and um, continue to participate. But again, from the bottom of our collective hearts, Thank you for your participation, your time. I know it's valuable and precious and you take time away from your families to do this and we really appreciate it. 
Have a wonderful night. So, Suja, yeah. do I have it right that this will be presented on the April 12th meeting? Uh, let me check with Angela. Angela, is that what our schedule is, April 12th? I think so. Is that right? Yes, it's on the uh, tentative agenda for April 12th. Okay. Want to be sure I turn up to the right meeting. Thank you. And I think I meant to say initiative, but I think you all know what I meant. I knew what you meant. <laughs> you did say the initiative, I think. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.